show. Well, Frodrik, did you enjoy my singing? I'm sure it was very nice, but seeing as how I'm a bat and all, I wouldn't trust my opinion on opera. But if you knew the Draxylvania polka, then I'm your bat. <laughs> I just cannot tell if it was good or not. If only I were back at the Perry Academy. Oh, I just wish I were back in Perry altogether. <laughs> hmm. Yuck! Hey, don't worry, babe. I'll get you out of here. All we gotta do is stick to the P-L-A-N. Capiche? Thank you, Frederick. Oh, you're so good to me. You've been pretty good to me, too. Besides, hanging out with you, I get a chance to torment Mr. Short, Pale, and Stupid. Mm, I heard that. Oh! Speak of the devil. Aren't you running a little late tonight, errand boy? I'm starving, Shaldi. I need my wine. Yes, yes, Mona, my love. Uh, I shall go off right away and begin hunting for the... Uh, looking for a wine shop in town. I know just the place. They have an excellent selection of the finest wines. Uh, oh, positive. <laughs> oh, negative. Mm, my favorite. Yeah, I'm sure ten minutes from now will be an excellent vintage. Are you still here? <laughs> uh, who, me? Uh, no. All right, he's gone. Quick! Hey, uh, you know he's getting blood, right? You drink blood. Shh! Now is not the time to start that old argument. It's not blood, it's just... Well, uh... uh... A real thick and, uh, salty-tasting mellow with a little, uh, iron aftertaste? Is that what that is? Uh... Something like that, yeah. You know, the Nile is not just a river in colonized British Egyptian Sudan. Out with it, damn you! Did you see which one? Yeah, uh, the third one on the left, I think. Or was it the first one? You know, <laughs> I really didn't get a good look, but definitely on the left. The last one. Oh! At this rate, I am never going to get off this island! Patience, child. The stars have aligned and things are about to get interesting. What was that? What was what? Quickly! Up to my balcony! Why? What's going on? Set you free. <coughs> don't, don't you know you are mine? <laughs> Forever! I am free, Frogic! Free! I hear you. Jeez, I got pretty big ears if you hadn't noticed. And you're not totally free. We still have to find the key to the boathouse. Till then, you're stuck here. Oh, right. Good point. That was very unusual. He said Mona? Who is this Mona, I wonder? Our work here is most decidedly not done.
There's no way I can open this thing unless we find that key. It's a stone gargoyle. Short and ugly. Kind of reminds me of Shroudy. I know Shroudy hid the key in one of these gargoyles. I just can't remember which one. Guess we're gonna have to search all of them. Now, Mr. Gargoyle, would you please be so kind as to give me the key that Shroudy has hidden inside of you? Pretty please, with sugar on top? Rusty old sword. Ah, uh, that thing looks like it's in pretty bad shape. I bet it would fall apart if you tried to hit anything with it. It's so rusty. It will definitely shatter if I hit anything with it, but it may have other uses. I'll remember it's here. It's a bear rug. Is it just me, or are its eyes following us? It's a rather ornate hanging banner. It's the Von Kiefer family crest. A two-headed vulture holding some thigh bones. I can't make out the family motto. Frederick? Get to pickin' while the pickin's are good. Words to live by. The tapestry is fairly loose. I'm not going to pull it down right now. But if I need it at some point, I'll remember that it's here. It's a large mace hanging high up on the wall. From the looks of it, I'd say it's still in pretty good condition. Mace, huh? Is that what it's called? I thought it was called anesthesia. I bet a big, heavy, hitting thing might be useful somewhere. But I'm not going to carry it around. I'll keep it in mind, though. provoke the gargoyle that has the key by smashing them all with that mace. Hey, that's not half bad. And it will be extremely fun. Let's do it. Looks like our favorite lake monster has a serious case of acid reflux disease. Whatever that is, it sounds painful. 
Inky needs to stop eating so much Italian. Oh, like lasagna or pizza? No, Italians. Like the boat full of Venetian tourists that he sank yesterday. Looks like we found the enchanted gargoyle. The name is Rufus Thaddeus Worthington IV. Not enchanted gargoyle, a walking corpse and rat with wings. Frederick, what is he talking about? Uh, later. Well, Rufus, this corpse and rat just made you lose your cool and blow your cover. How do you like them apples, Worthington? What a tremendous accomplishment. Perhaps we should have a moment of silence to honor you and your magnificent deeds. Please, I feel as though we started off on the wrong foot. Or in your case, perhaps the wrong claw. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mona de Lafitte. Charmed, I'm sure. I don't usually associate with common folks such as yourself. As you appear to be a lady, I would consider kissing your hand, but based on the smell of you, I must conclude that you are clearly a member of the unwashed masses. <gasps> you certainly are an unpleasant creature. You would be unpleasant, too, if you endured what I have. Like what? Tell me your story. Oh, very well. Many years ago, the Baroness von Kiefer created me in her workshop. Apparently, the Baron's death left the castle a bit on the lonely side. After my creation, I was allowed to reside in the library. The Baroness and I would spend hours talking, and in my free time, I was given full access to the Von Kiefer Library. During the day, I would spend hours upon hours educating myself and feasting upon literary delicacies such as Shakespeare, Chaucer, and Milton. A most enjoyable experience, I assure you. so angry? Do you really want to hear my story? If you tell me yours, I'll tell you mine. Oh, very well. Many years ago, the Baroness von Kiefer created me in her workshop. Apparently, the Baron's death left the castle a bit on the lonely side. After my creation, I was allowed to reside in the library. The Baroness and I would spend hours talking, and in my free time, I was given full access to the Von Kiefer Library. During the day, I would spend hours upon hours educating myself and feasting upon literary delicacies such as Shakespeare, Chaucer, and Milton. A most enjoyable experience, I assure you. I'm curious. How did you end up on this bridge? The Baroness decided she wanted to have a child. Uh... The Baroness of this castle? Yes. Before Shroudy ruled here, the Baroness Lilith von Kiefer was in charge. So then you and she... Oh, don't be absurd. You don't seem to like Shroudy. Oh, God, no. Not at all. After he was born, my days of living quietly in the library were over. He thought I was his play toy and pestered me constantly. Finally, one day after he attempted to dress me up in one of the Baroness's nightgowns, I yelled at him and told him to never touch me again. He ran off crying to the Baroness, and that's all it took. I've been on this bridge ever since. If you hated Shadi so much, why didn't you leave after the Baroness disappeared? Well, you of all people should know. Like you, I'm magically bound to this castle. I can't just simply fly away. As punishment for yelling at her son, I'm doomed to be stuck out in the cold 
forever holding this key in my mouth. If you want revenge on Shroudy, then give us the key. Trust me, that will really make him mad. Let me take your suggestion under advisement. Hmm. I think not. You are such a jerk. Well then, I guess that's why I'm not going to give you the key. Because I'm just a jerk. Now run along, you two, back to your tower. Get comfortable, because without this key, there's no way you're getting through that door. <laughs> oh, did I mention the door and the key were enchanted? So, as you can see, there's no way you're getting through that door, and no way I'm giving you this key. Name your price for the key. Any price. Hmm, I might have something. Get rid of the Raven Edgar for me, and then we can talk about giving you the key. No way. Edgar's cool. Why don't you like him? He is a bird. He sits above me. I am a statue. You figure it out. Let's just say he has bad aim. Or good aim, from my point of view. It's disgusting. Just like you. Get rid of him and I may think about giving you the key. Till then, leave me alone so I may think my thoughts. Oh! So that's what you snooty types call picking your nose and scratching your backside. I always wondered... Enough! Rufus! Where is this Edgar Raven you speak of? Haven't you been listening? He sits above me in a raven roost at the top of the tower. Now please return to the great unwashed masses from whence you came. Do you actually like sitting on this bridge and being Shroudy's servant? No, because he's always taking me for Granite. Oh, 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 oh my! Yes! Oh, 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 oh my! Yes! That joke is old enough to collect a pension. What is your name? <laughs> Kid Kooky, master of all comedy? I'll have you know that I have read 32 books on comedy and have been told I can be fresh, funny, and cutting edge. I see. So you just choose not to be. Exactly. And to answer your query seriously this time? Yes, stay serious, please. <clears throat> it's not a matter of liking what I do. It is a matter of duty. We enchanted gargoyles take pride in doing our duties and doing them well. Unlike your joke-telling. You all extremely lucky I am bound to this bridge or you would be severely punished. Your jokes are punishment enough. <laughs> May I please have the key to the rest of the castle? Not going to happen, I'm afraid. I take my job very seriously, unlike you. I don't have a job. What job are you talking about? Looking pretty, smelling nice, not speaking till spoken to. I wouldn't expect a raise if I were you. Hey! Anyone ever teach you it isn't polite to speak ill of the dead, you rotten summer? Ixnay on the Ottenway! We still need to get the key, remember? Is there anything we could do to help persuade you to give us a door key? I think it is night time we go. Funny. I had that exact thought. where we search for the hidden key. It's a shoreline of Lake Vaux. I have to find a way to escape this damnable castle so that I can get over there and back to Paris. Why don't you fly over there again? 
I know it's kind of far, but I think we could make it. For some reason, I can't fly over moving water. It must be part of the magic curse Shroudy placed on me. Curse, huh? Does the name of this so-called curse rhyme with... Zampire? That's the bottom of the tower with what appears to be some sort of birdhouse at the top. That's where Edgar lives. He's the only guy in the whole castle who knows how to party. Let's go see what's up. Sober. Sober? Are you sure? Not from where I'm standing. Excuse me, Mr. Raven. Might I have a quick word with you? Yeah, sure. My name is Mona. What's yours? The name's Edgar. Hey, I've seen you before. You're that gal the short guy keeps locked up in the tower, aren't you? Yes, my full name is Mona de la Fitte. Pleased to make your acquaintance. And yes, I am sad to say that for the past year, Shadi has kept me locked up in this castle. But now I finally have a chance at freedom. Earlier tonight, Shadi was killed. We heard his screams from across the lake. Dead, huh? Well, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. So now the castle is yours. Don't worry about me staying here. I'm building a permanent nest in Godford Falls near where my girl lives. But until I make a good nest, collect my fortune, she won't marry me. So this is my bachelor pad till then. I can't get through the doors that's right below you. Wolf is one of the gargoyles, has the key, but he won't give it to us. Well, I'd like to help you, but I don't know too much about those gargoyles. All I know is that every time I, uh, do my business, I hear one of them yelling up at me from below. Oh! Well, I'm a bird. I do bird stuff. But they haven't had much to complain about lately. I'm a bit backed up, if you know what I mean. Um, maybe. Yeah, the carrion pickings are always pretty slim in the winter. But come spring? It'll be a veritable feast to dried out carrion. That'll get the old pipes flowing. Good to know, I guess. How do you like living in Castle Varg? It's all right. I can do what I want, hang out with my buds, party, drink. No one bothers me. But I feel out of touch sometimes way out here. When I was in the city, I was in the know. I could follow my favorite sports team, hear the latest gossip. Sometimes it's just too isolated around here. You know what I mean? I do. You just need to feel more connected to the world, more informed. I do too. As soon as I'm back in Pelly, things will be back to normal. Great. <laughs> uh, good luck with that. Do you know of another way into this part of the castle? Nah. This place is sealed up tighter than... Well, it's sealed up tight. Just before you got here, that short fellow went around installing bars and locks and boarded up almost every window and door to this part of the castle. I guess Shroudy didn't want someone, but probably you, to get in for some reason. That is all I need to know. It's an old angelic looking statue standing right on the edge of the tower. isn't under the statue. If you drop it on him, it'll miss and hit the stone wall next to him. You're right, Fadrik. We better find a way to get the key from him. A 
looking fountain. Is it just me, or is that fountain actually wearing sunglasses? Well, maybe he's cool. Because when you're cool, the sun shines on you 24 hours a day. Unless you're a vampire, of course. Then the sun shines on you only once, and you burst into flames. Hello, Mr. Fountain. How are you doing today? I think he said, I'd love to chat with you, but it's hard to speak with a high-pressure jet of water emanating from my mouth. I can imagine. I wonder if there's a way to turn it off somehow. There aren't any valves to shut off the water that I can see. Maybe they're somewhere else. It's some sort of fake man thing. I don't know what it is, but it looks like maybe it was made out of clay. Poor fellow. He really lost his head. I think he's a magically created golem. Somebody made him and sent him here for a reason. It's some sort of torture device. It looks like my Aunt Votre Mère. Hello there! Well, hello there, dearie. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Oh! Ah! You, you can, can talk. talk! Oh, don't be frightened, my dears. I won't harm you. Who are you? My name is Barbara, although my friends call me Barb. Get it? Barb? <laughs> yeah, I think we get it. Bob, as in a sharp metal device that slowly and painfully rends flesh as it gets pushed into some poor bastard's body? <laughs> That's downright hilarious. <laughs> well, maybe that guy doesn't find it so funny. Oh, just ignore him. Uh, I mean, that! Aside from torturing people, what do you do down here? Well, I'm actually the torture chamber stenographer. It's my job to record what's being said down here when Shroudy or the Baroness are, um, in a serious discussion with her, uh, guests. What kind of stuff have you heard? Could you tell us? Oh, sure. I don't think that would harm anything. I like to think of myself as an open book. And speaking of books, that's what the Baroness would usually be asking about. Trouty, on the other hand, he usually didn't ask anything at all. Why? Was Shroudy too shy? No, too sadistic. The one fellow over there without his head, Shroudy really went after. That's right around the time when the Baroness disappeared. Curious thing about that guest. What? He didn't bleed at all. Shroudy took one whack at his head and it fell on the floor and shattered like a Ming vase. Oh, <laughs> very, very odd. Even for around here. Book? What book? Oh, yes. The Book of Shrouds was always the topic of discussion for the Baroness. It was mostly various priests, scholars, magicians, historians, and, oh, holy men that the Baroness would bring down here. She was definitely trying to extract knowledge from them about that book. When was the last time you saw the Baroness? She was torturing that headless man over there several years ago. After she got the information she wanted, she left the castle in a hurry and never returned. Do you have this session memorized right before the Baroness left? Yes. Let me see. I believe I have it here. It's been a few years. Oh, oh. <clears throat> here I go. Man from Cabal. Ouch, ouch, ouch. It hurts so much. Ah! I can't take it. Ah! Uh, do you think you could skip ahead a little bit to where he was actually talking? Yes, of course. Man from Cabal. Yes, I have the tome you're looking for. It will give you all the secrets to unlocking the book. Baroness, tell me where it is or I'm going to shove this hot poker. Oh my! Could we please, um, skip ahead a little bit more? Oh, certainly. Man from Cabal. The tome is in my camp, buried at the base of a large oak tree near the Vargo Pass crossroads. Baroness, you'd better not be lying to me or when I return you will feel pain as you have never felt it before. Huh, 
After that, the Baroness disappeared. A few days later, Shroudy came downstairs screaming about a trap. He took an axe and tried to chop the poor fellow's head off. But when the head rolled off, there was no blood. It wasn't a man at all. It was some kind of talking clay statue or some such. I think it's called a clay golem. How do you know about that? Used to play a lot of Dungeons and Dogs. The clay golems dropped a lot of loot and were pretty aggro. I should have known. Bob, please go on. Apparently, somebody was laying a trap for the Baroness. And it must have worked, for she never returned. What did Shroudy do after that? I believe he searched frantically for months, but he didn't find a single trace of her at Vargo Pass or anywhere else in Draxylvania. Poor little monster. He lost his mommy so young. He was devoted to her, you know. He got lonely and left on holiday soon after that. He came back occasionally with a new female companion, but he seemed to grow tired of each one after a time. Then, off he would go again. Hey, Mona, that may explain why you're here. Yes, from what I've seen, he likes you best of them so far. Maybe it's because you look so much like her. Like whom? Oh, his mother, the Baroness, of course. What was this cabal you mentioned? I don't know, but I do recall they all seemed to wear a belt that had a gold circle with a star in the middle, and an eye in the middle of the star. The Baroness seemed to really, uh, uh, give them special attention. Who was the... <clears throat> guess you speak of? The Baroness would search all over the world for priests and scholars, or even wizards and witches, and invite them to stay at the castle expenses paid. Let me guess. She slipped them a Mickey, and instead of the spa, they ended up down here. Right. Then she would ask me to take down everything I heard for future reference. When she was done, some went into the pit, and a few she took somewhere else. Maybe another dungeon somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> As you can imagine, I don't get around much. What does being an Iron Maiden pay? Pay? Oh, no. I have to do this. I'm not sure why. Torturing people does seem horrible and just downright unfriendly and all, but we all have to follow the paths our creators have laid down for us. My path in this life is to slowly squeeze the life out of people and record their thoughts on the matter. Simple, true, but still rewarding. <laughs> Settle down, our mama isn't going to be happy. How come we have never had the pleasure of talking before? Well, the Baroness and later Shroudy always told me never to talk to strangers or any guests. But now that they're both gone, I just feel free to talk to you for some reason. How are you able to talk? Oh, for the longest time I was scrap metal from a wrecked ship, the SS Woebegone, out of Lake Superior. Then I was sold to Acme Toys, Tools, and Torture Devices in Port Varda. There I was forged and cast and shipped here. Then one Christmas Eve, the Baroness made a wish upon a bright star that I would come to life. And what do you know? A magical fairy came down and granted her wish, and that is how I came to life. Are you sure that's the way it happened? Pretty sure. Do you happen to know the combination to Shroudy's coffin? No, I'm sorry. I don't know the whole combination, but I am pretty sure the first number is zero, though. Unfortunately, from my position, I can really only see the first number. Wish I could help more. Oh, good idea. My, uh, <laughs> grumbling stomach thinks you should go ask Ozzy, the fountain gargoyle. He might have had a better vantage point of the combination. Oh, I will. Thank you. I should warn you, he is a bit rusty in the head and is sometimes impossible to understand. Well, I better be going. It's been very nice talking with you. You too. <laughs> Shh, hush. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, Hello? Hey, hello there yourself, dollface. How are you doing today? Who are you? My name is Frank. Although my friends call me Frankie. 
I'm here with my associates, Sammy, Joey, and Dean. We've been living in this castle for quite some time. You might say we uh, manage the neighborhood. How you doing, Frankie? Hey, look, you guys, it's the Frodemeister. I told you about him. This crazy guy could do things with his calcar that would make your head spin. You still do that trick, eh, Frody? Oh, no, Frankie. I I've sort of stopped doing stuff like that. I'm laying off the vino now, staying clean, if you know what I mean. Ah, eh, forget about it. Yo, no I think. Hey, sorry to hear about the thing with Rocco. You know, he's still looking for you. He and the Belfry boys are still pretty steamed up. You better make it right and soon. Capiche? And what about you? Looks like you got yourself a full-on rat pack. Don't be a wise guy. You're trying to be some kind of comedian or something? No, I really think of myself as more of a short, one-eyed song and dance man. Please forgive him. Eh, forget about it. Do you and your... <clears throat> associates know the layout of the castle? Oh, yeah. My associates and I use the old plumbing running through the castle to get from room to room. They pretty much had to run of the place, with the exception of the kitchen. Why can't you go into the kitchen? Well, the Baroness's cat hangs out in there. She's taken down a lot of my soldiers. Just the other day, she whacked my cousin Jimmy the Rat Caboni. Not the most inventive nickname I've ever heard. What are you gonna do? It's a popular name. Everybody wants it. So what am I gonna do? How come I never met you before? Well, your master Baron Shroudy wasn't too fond of us. So we laid low until we heard from Edgar the Raven that Shroudy got whacked. Did you order that hit? What? Me? No! I didn't even know you could... Ahem. <clears throat> order a hit. Or I might have been tempted to order one sooner. Yeah, I've heard you singing too. It's nice, but a bit overwhelming and loud. You need to learn to control it better so you don't blow away your audience. Gee, thanks. Opera tips from a rat. An Italian rat? If we Italians know anything, it's opera. You're good. You just need some coaching. You guys use the pipes, right? We might need some plumbing help. Yeah. We know this castle's plumbing like the back of our claws. Do you guys know how to turn off the fountain over there? Well, we might be able to do that for you. For a price. Always a price with these guys. Ever heard of altruism? Yeah, my grandmother had that. Her shaking got so bad we eventually had to hand feed her. This was just before that pie whacker son of a... Got her. So, uh, what about it? Oh, never mind. What do you want this time? Well, nothing in particular. Just trade us something of value and we'll fix your pipes. No problem. I'll get Remy the Rat Fink to do it for you if we can drag him away from that stupid cookbook he found. Fine. We'll think of something. Yeah, you do that. Anything else? No. That is enough. Hey, I can never get enough of talking to you, honey pie. <laughs> do you know the combination to Saudi's coffin? You know? We never did try to steal his combo. He never had anything we wanted to, uh, borrow. But I bet Ozzy over at the water pool or Big Bad Barb over here saw something. Then why not ask them? Okay, I will. Thanks. Hey, anything for you, dollface. You got any more questions for Papa Frankie over here? Bob over there mentioned something about a magic book the Baroness was interested in. Are you familiar with that? How could we not be? It's all the Baroness ever screamed about while she was torturing the poor bastard she brought down here. You mind telling me about it? Well, that depends. Uh, that's where my memory enters uh, what you call a gray area. How gray? Navy blue. But it might get a little more beige if you do us a solid. What is it you want us to do so that you'll tell us about the book? We need you to hit somebody for us, and it needs to be a real message job. Hi, Wackett. The Baroness's cat lives near the kitchen. You take her out, and maybe we can do some business. You want me to kill a defenseless little kitty? Defenseless, my... She's 20 pounds of pure feline killing machine. She's too much for any of my capos to handle. We even brought in a specialist from Sicily. After Pie Wackett was finished with him, all that was left was a single foot. I guess this pie wacket likes Italian. <laughs> <laughs>
You take care of this little problem for us and bring a collar as proof the deed was done. We'll tell you what you need to know to get to the Book of Shrouds. I will tell you this much. To find the Book of Shrouds, you're going to have to gain access to the Baroness's secret laboratory, which is only accessible through the library. Now that's all I'm gonna tell you until you bring me the cat's collar. All right. Fine. Kill a defenseless little kitten and bring back the collar as proof. Yeah, that's it. You have any more questions for me, sweet cheeks? Hey, fellas, look who's back. That tall drink of water and the Froadmeister. Now, what can we do for you? We have these mixed nuts and dried fruit snacks for you. You think you might want these in exchange for helping us out? Hmm, fruits and nuts, huh? Well, all right. Toss them here. Here you are. Soon as you are done eating, will you please stop the water from coming out over there? Hey, these are delicious. Hey, Dino. Go kill the water on the fountain! Ah, Dean Baby! You okay? Uh-oh. I think he's stuck. Look, Mona. The water in the fountain stopped. Oh, well. I guess you two won't ever get the chance to hear him sing Batsamore. Pity. He's pretty good. Anyway, glad we could be a service and thanks for the nuts and fruits. Ciao! My name, my name is, is Ozzy. I'm a, a fa fountain? Yeah, fountain, you know, I think I'm a... Well, wait, what was the question? Seems like maybe this guy's been drinking something else besides water. What do you do down here? Well, I sit around and watch things, you know, um, uh, and, uh, you know, there, there are people uh, that come in and out of here, and uh, sometimes I see things. And uh, I like to write songs, but uh, I, uh, what's my name again? You said you see things around here? What kind of things? Usually, it's blokes getting tortured, but aside from that, there's usually a couple of people who come down here just before uh, sunrise and then they climb into them funny looking beds. But, one is a short, pasty-faced dude with a bad temperament. But the other one, she's a tall, good-looking broad. You know, she looks a lot like you, actually. That's because it is me. My name is Mona. That short, pasty-faced dude you mentioned is keeping me locked in this castle against my will. That's not right. Is there anything I can do to help? You said you see Shroudy. When he goes to bed, does he do anything unusual? Well, it, it seems like he's always fumbling about with that weird clock on the side of his bed. Weird clock? Well, yeah. I, I see him dialing in a couple of numbers. I, I assumed it might be a reminder he set for himself to take his meds on, on account of him being nuts and all. Right, but I, I, I have some experience with medication myself. Or should I say, uh, medicating myself. Ozzy, would you mind telling us the numbers he uses? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, sure. Yeah, well, I think there are three numbers, but I only know two of them. And the numbers are uh, three, and then and seven, and, and I know that seven is the final number. Thank you, Ozzy. You've been very helpful. That is all I need to know. You did it, Mona! The coffin is opening! It's Shroudy's pillow! Too bad Shroudy isn't lying there. If he were, I would use this pillow to smother the life out of him. Remember, Mona, he's already dead. Well then, I'd use it to smack him over the head. 
In that case, you'd better hope Shrouty doesn't have a backup pillow. Otherwise, you'd be risking a full-blown vampire pillow fight. Knowing what a little pervert Shrouty is, I'm not sure I want to know what's under his pillow. Don, it's only the newspaper. You kind of got my hopes up there for a minute. It's a copy of the Draxylvanian Tribune. The headline reads, No leads in the continued disappearance of local paper boys. The Gothford United play the Vlad's Landing All Blacks tonight in championship. And Mayor Vinton of Gothford Falls is predicted to survive recall vote. I'm gonna grab this. It might come in handy. looking item. I wonder what it's used for. I'll take a wild guess. How about grinding stuff? It's an unlit torch. Wow! I've never seen one of those. It seems like they never go out. Ever! This might come in handy, but I'm not carrying it around. I'll keep it in mind. That's strange. I never realized the castle had a sub-basement. It looks a little hot in there. Who's that mean-looking dude with the pitchfork? And who is that standing next to him? You mean the guy with the stupid look on his face and the name tags that says, My name is George? I have no idea. Hello in there! Who are you waving to, Mona? A whole bunch of lawyers. of pit. I can't see what's down there because it's so dark. You may not be able to see it, but you can certainly smell it. Whatever's down there smells worse than the skid marks in Shrouty's underwear. How do you know that? Ugh, never mind. I don't need to know. If I want to open it, I should probably try pulling on the handle. It's a couple of chains. Now all we need are some chips, dip, whips, and we got ourselves a party. one of them up, but I had to use all the lotion in the bottle. Now it's empty. Thank you. 
that thing? Let me see. It looks like there's a small plaque down on the corner of the chair. Let me read it. It says, Acme Groin Crusher. Aren't you going to follow that up with some kind of witty comment? Mona, there are some things you simply do not joke about. Frederick's fruits and nuts. Hold on. What are you doing? Mona, please wait. Relax, Frederick. They are just the fruits and nuts from your cage. Oof. On a somewhat related note, I'll let you know when my heart restarts. I don't want to smell like a French, um, house of women of no more fiber. Thing. Let me see. It looks like there's a small plaque down on the corner of the chair. Let me read it. It says, Acme Groin Crusher. Aren't you going to follow that up with some kind of witty comment? Mona, there are some things you simply do not joke about. is empty, I can fill it up with this dripping oil. Did it. Both hinges are now loose. If I want to open it, I should probably try pulling on the handle. That did it. The pit is now open. Man, that smells horrible. because it's so dark. You may not be able to see it, but you can certainly smell it. Whatever's down there smells worse than the skid marks in Shroudy's underwear. How do you know that? Ugh, never mind. I don't need to know. The only way I'd ever go down there is if the smell was somehow removed. It is that bad. But I have no problem with carrion. In fact, carrion jerky makes the best jerky.
Okay, let's see if this key will finally do the trick. Not so fast, Toots. Looks like we got ourselves a small problem. Unless you happen to have a couple of oars hidden in that dress of yours, we're not going anywhere. It's kind of hard to paddle a boat without the actual paddles. Feast in Shen! Can't anything be easier around here? Without those oars, it's going to be impossible to make it across the lake. The current is way too strong. And then there's Inky. Let me think. Uh, Mona, remember when I said we had a small problem? Yes, Frederick? Well, I think it just got bigger. What the hell is that? You mean, who the hell am I? <laughs> and hell is right, for it is I, Shroudy. I am bad. I, I didn't think it was possible to... to... Return from the dead is an all-powerful shadow spirit? To get even uglier than you were. That is amazing. Mm. Mock me all you want, little rodent. Because in my moment of triumph, I care not what you think. You, on the other hand, my dear, I care deeply about. My brilliant dark jewel. Not even my death can keep us apart. How, how did you manage this? You aren't that clever. You can thank the magical arcane tome my mother used to create me. She told me I was the living manifestation of black magic itself. <laughs> and so, although my vampire body has perished, my dark spirit shall live on forever. Aha! I knew you couldn't have done this on your own. Regardless, you and I shall never be separated again. I, I will be with you for all of eternity, my sweet. Yes, my dear. Although I am no longer susceptible to the vulnerabilities all vampires suffer, you, on the other hand, are. So, as long as I maintain the sign of the cross near this boat, you will never be able to escape this island. Hey, Mona. Unfortunately, stupid Doc and Cloudy over there might be right. I'm not strong enough to pull those oars out of his hands, and you can't get close enough. We're gonna have to find somebody, or something else, to do it for us. It's a bowl of sugar. People use it to make things sweeter. It's a butter knife. I better take this knife. I think I might need it. It's some sort of pewter cup with a lid and straw. Very odd. It's just a sippy cup used by little kids so they don't spill their drink. I bet this was Shroudy's. Shroudy's baby cup? He still uses it? If you hadn't noticed, the guy was a little weird. I don't think I'll need the cup, but the straw might be useful. Shows a Baron von Kiefer. So, woman standing next to him must be the Baroness. She has a very strange look on her face. I think the artist was trying to capture a subtle, I'm going to murder this poor bastard as soon as I get a chance sort of feeling. I'd say he succeeded. It 
better after all the crap we went through. Ooh, pretty! Yeah, but I hate purple. I'm more partial to pink. Oh, this is just great. Now I'm fat. Yippee! It worked! Go forth to the boathouse. There you will see the ghost of Shouty holding the oars for their last boat. I want you to get those oars from Shrouty using any means necessary. Well, apparently I have to do whatever you say, so alright. I work for a witch, now I'm taking orders from a bee. I heard that! You were supposed to. Hey, what the hell? Little face Look, just give me the oars. It's a blood Violence. Fortunately, I like violence. I a crack a fist. Boom, ba. Move this fella, move this fella. Ra, ra, ra. Go, Rufus. Ah, not the boat. He got the boat. <laughs> you can keep the oars now for all the good they were doing you. <laughs> we got rid of Shroudy, but he sank the boat. We needed to escape. Are there any other boats in the castle? Not that I know of. Time for some new ideas. Should do the trick. Maybe not as nice as a boat, but at least it floats. Grab those oars, Mona. It's time for the maiden voyage of the SS Dirtna. is apparently so stupid that he willingly follows Shroudy's orders even after Shroudy's death. We need to try and find something we can use to drive him away. That won't accomplish anything, I'm afraid. Sorry. These two items won't combine together. to temporarily blind him. Go ahead, Mona. Make his day. Keep going, Mona. I think you got him on the ropes. I can't seem to hit him. He moves way too fast now. some dry ice chunks down in that magic workshop of the Baronesses.
sinful trick. After he swallowed that ice, he thickened up. It was easy to spray him this time. Are you sure we need to bring all this stuff? Of course, you idiot! We must be fully prepared! I am an expert on the Nosferatu! And one thing I know for sure is that the undead don't just sail up to you and present themselves. Hello, Vizel! Do you know a good place to land our copper? Uh, our pleasure cruiser? I don't know! Try over there around that point! Oh, okay! Thank you! Toodaloo! Right, whatever! What was I saying? Uh, the undead don't just sail up to you? Right. They cherish their lairs immensely and never willingly give them up. One thing I know for sure, this brood of the barons, this Mona, will be there waiting for us, getting ready to fiercely defend her crypt with every ounce of undead energy she possesses. She will never willingly leave that castle. We made it, Frogic! Who would have thought that crossing a simple lake would be such a pain in the ass? <sighs> well, off to Perry. Wait, wait, wait! What are you gonna do? Walk there? I was thinking a train. A train? Even if we could child, catch a train, there's the small problem of you of only being night. able to travel at night. Come to that me. Would have to be an Come to fast me. Child of the night. Why are you not walking towards me? Aren't you listening? Do not make me count to three! One... Two... Three! And the drag coefficient, adjust the gravity, then, of course... Yeah, finally! Mona! Wake up! Mona! Come, child, come inside where it is warm and safe. I have been waiting for you. We, oui, mistress. Oh, I see. You want your fortune told. Good idea. And see if you can find out what's going to happen on next week's episode of Bats of Our Lives. Well, hello, my dearest Mona de Lafitte. Come in and sit down. We meet at last. Sorry to bother you, madam. I don't know, but I had the weirdest feeling that came over me. It compelled me to seek you out for some mysterious reason. Yes, yes, you learned that I have that effect on people. But goodness gracious, I am being rude. I know all about you, but you don't know me at all. Forgive me. I am called the Great Madame Strigoi, knower of all things better left unknown. Why have you summoned me here? I know your plight, and I know how best to prepare you for your journey home. Really? You know how to get me back to Pelly? Okay, listen very carefully, for I'm only going to say this as many times as you ask me to. First, you need your coffin to sleep in. Do you have it here? No! And what do you mean I need a coffin to sleep in? I thought Shroudy was being, well, uh, just being weird. Making me sleep in there when I had a perfectly good bed up in my boudoir. Besides, no self-respecting opera star would sleep in a coffin. It's absurd. Well, this opera star is going to have to. Now wake up, girl. You need a coffin to sleep in every night or you will die. You will die. Capiche? Well, I suppose... I do, but I'm not happy about it. Being a vampire isn't about being happy. Listen, child, in life stuff, uh, stuff just happens that we don't always like. We just have to get over it and move on as best we can. Besides, living the life, uh, uh, unlife of a vampire can be very rewarding and just as fulfilling as uh, real life. Trust me, child, I know. You are strong. I have seen it. You'll be just fine. And I'll guide you all the way. Now, where is your coffin? At the lake shore where we left it. Uh-oh.
Hector, go get it now. Constable Otto just passed here a few minutes ago on his nightly patrol. I think he said something about investigating a scream and looking out for two strangers reported skulking hereabouts. Hurry and go get it, and bring it back! ASAP! It's my coffin! I used it to cross the lake! It's a sign! No Shinola, Sherlock. What does it say for our listening audience? I don't like to read. Read? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Okay. It says, to the Draxylvania Picnic Grounds and Graveyard south two miles, one mile north to Vlad's Landing, five miles north to the Lake Vogue Dam and Waterworks, and seven miles north to Dread Rock Gorge and Gothford Falls. Speed kills, no dumping and no parking from here to the dead tree from noon till 6 p.m., Violators will be booted at owner's expense, the VPD. Hello, sir. May I talk to you for a moment? Yes, but only for a few minutes. I am Constable Otto Van Pelt, and I'm in the middle of serious investigation. Some very strange things have been happening around here lately. Can you tell me about those weird events happening lately? Yes. I got reports from cottages nearby of two men who have been skulking around shoreline and along the road. Then we heard reports from all over of horrible scream that echo throughout the valley. So, I was assigned to investigate and about 100 yards down the shore I found, well, what appeared to be Baron Shroudy von Hiefer's clothing. And it smelled awful. Noxious vapors were emanating from the clothes. It was quite a sight. And last night I discovered the coffin sitting on the shore with two oars in it. It is mighty strange. You'll have to pardon me, ma'am. I, I best be getting back to my investigation. I haven't much time before Luke Crane gets wind of it and muscles the case out from under me. He's always trying to be in the spotlight. What are you doing with that boat? Looking for clues. By the dirt residue I found in the coffin, it looks as though someone kept putting dirt in it, and then someone else kept dumping it out. Also, by impressions left behind, it looks like someone, a woman, judging by the shape of the imprint, slept here every night and had a bat for a companion. How do you know that? By the smell. Bats have a distinctive odor that is hard to wash out. Tell me about it. Yes. Bats are popular pets in Draxylvania for some reason, though I personally think they're bad luck. Why is that? Because anyone who adopts one seems to come down with spontaneous anemia right away. Plus, bats are not loyal pets. As soon as their owners die of this anemia, they fly away and find another family. But in Draxylvania, you get used to these things. can you deduce from looking at the coffin? Well, the woman who slept here wore black and purple, judging from the fibers I found, and had black hair. And the coffin owner's name was written on a tag on the inside of the lid, a Mona de Lafitte. Sounds like a French name. I think popular in the south of France, near Calais. Where are you from, may I ask? Calais? That's not in the south... Shh! Idiot. Oh! Right. Where? Belgium. Quebec. Where? Belgium. Quebec. Well, which is it? Quebec or Belgium? Uh, Belgium, Quebec. A small colony of Belgium... Ians. Just east of Montreal. And I didn't get your name. Vona Fade the Feet. Don't lay my feet. No, I mean, come again. Vona May... Whitney? Uh, Whitney. Uh, Dark Lake. My name is Whitney Dark Lake of the, uh... Belgium, Quebec, Dark Lakes. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, too. Well, if you see any tall French women about with a bat as pet, let me know so I can ask her a few questions, okay? He's gotta be putting us on. Shh! Yes, Constable. I certainly will. Can you tell me about the nearest towns? Well, there is Vlad's Landing down the road behind you, and beyond that near the border is the quaint village of Gothard Falls. Up the river are the towns of Ravenhaven, Howling Oaks, Batsburg, and the new retirement community of Scarlet Meadows. Tell me about Vlad.
Smith Landing. Yes, it's a hilly town located just down the road there and serves as a hub of commerce for Lake Varg. Hmm? The Draxylvania Tourist Board, a powerful entity in these parts, almost got Burgermeister to change the town name. To what? Super Happy Funville. The board thought it might increase tourism. I like the runner-up name myself. Let me guess. Autotopia? No, but I like that. <laughs> no, the runner-up name was Don't Swim in the Water, the Lake Monster Will Get You, Ville. In the end, all parties agreed to leave as is. It was for the best. Tell me about Garfoot Falls. It's just the cutest little town built on a bridge overlooking the falls. Quite spectacular. But the local baron appointed the most corrupt skirt chaser as Burgermeister, Wilhelm Winton. Ugh. They say he has charisma and can make deals better than anyone. Villagers seem to like him, but no woman is free from his tentacles for long. I sure hope the recall campaign succeeds. If he is a good leader, why do you hate him so much? <laughs> oh my! I think I asked the wrong thing. Are you okay? No, he's fine. It was a long time ago. High school. And I had... No, Stop him. that's okay. This crush on any time at all. She had beautiful braids and long blonde hair. She smelled so good. Oh, Lord. So we have to go now and, uh... And then he came along with his sweet-talking ways and mesmerizing stares. Do something! Uh... Oh, my! I feel faint! Yeah, that's it. I'm passing out! I'm going to be sick! Not far from the truth. Really? Do you need a doctor? Um, no. Suddenly I feel a lot better. Tell me about the retirement community of Scarlet Meadows. Oh, that is a strange place. It used to be the castle of Maud the Impaler, but then the ghoulish society took it over, renovated it, and opened it up as retirement community for Draxylvania nobility. Huh? They had golf course, guys of heated pools, and everything. Thing is, they only like to golf at night, and the retirees really don't look that old. But I hear the place is very, very nice, and the healthcare is great. No one gets sick. Can you tell me about the graveyard down the road? The Draxylvania graveyard and picnic grounds? Another bright idea by the tourist board. They thought by throwing in some table swings and grills, tourists would flock there by the droves to eat corn on the cob while sitting on top of great-grandmother. <laughs> and they didn't? Actually, they did, but only at night for some reason. Moonlight picnics are all the rage this year. Have you seen two men rowing out on the lake? I think I saw some men in a boat not too long ago fighting with the lake monster. I thought I saw them throw vials of water at it that caused the monster to sink. Then they rowed up to the Baron's castle. Must be guests. When the Baroness was alive, they had guests all the time. Never saw any of them leave, though. Oh well. Who do you suppose those two men were? Well, a woodsman who reported seeing them said they were acting funny, like they were up to something. And they had lots of strange sorts of equipment, each with a symbol of an eye in the middle of a pentagram. I think they might have been meteorologists, or lawyers. I'm out of questions for now. Okay, back to my investigation. it, but we were too late. Constable Otto was there. I guess it's time that you had this. Vampires for Domkopf. It has everything a budding vampire like you needs. Read it and learn it all. It tells everything you need to know about your new vampire powers, as well as your many vampire restrictions. It has rules, flowcharts, pie charts, pie recipes, and good advice for vampires of all types. Thank you, Madame Stukoy. Back to being a vampire. With some time and practice, you'll slowly gain new vampire powers, especially now that Shroudy is no longer your master. You don't have to read it cover to cover, but you may want to use it from time to time if you two encounter difficulties during your journey. 
As a member of the undead, you are required to return to your grave every night My and... My grave! But seriously, I know, off on a side, I'm really not dead. Huh? No, 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 Mona. It says right here, when bitten and drained by a vampire, then fed some of the vampire's own blood, the victim becomes technically and legally dead in most countries, except Nevada, where death can be annulled within 24 hours. Grave dirt! Fine, I'll get right on it! It is not your grave, per se, but you have to sleep in the coffin filled with dirt from your grave every day. That is how it works. You did bring that grave dirt with you when you escaped the castle, right? Uh, not exactly. I, uh, sort of dumped it out. I'm afraid you're going to have to go back to the castle and retrieve it. Back to the, the castle? castle? Shush now, something's coming in. Oh, great spirit of the ball, show me sector 12. Madame Strigoi? Who are they? Vampire hunters. Monsieur Calvin and Belgu, his apprentice. Oh, why on earth did Sign send them instead of Abraham? Ugh! God only knows. Oh, well, they are vampire hunters from a religious brotherhood. You can thank them for staking Baron Shroudy von Kiefer to death back by the lake. They want to stake you, too. They will not likely rest until your undead heart stops beating in your undead chest, after which time you will be 100% dead. Look, if you do not find more grave dirt before sunrise, you will not be able to return to your coffin, and I already explained how important that is. Try the Draxylvania Cemetery and Picnic Grounds for a start. It's just down the road past the lakeshore. You can't miss it. What you're saying is that if we're ever going to make it to Paris, before we can leave, we must get Mona's coffin, then replenish our supply of Mona's grave dirt, and we're done? Once you have the grave dirt and your coffin, you will need a wagon to carry it all and a horse to pull it. I think you can borrow the wagon from the cemetery caretaker, and I just so happen to have a line on a horse for sale in the local town of Lad's Landing just up the road from here. I grabbed this flyer while I was there. I don't have any extra money, so you'll have to work something out with the owners. Steal, uh, borrow wagon from the caretaker, work something out with the owner of the horse, get coffin and grave dirt, check. Luckily for you, I know some Turkish smugglers in Porto Varda. They owe me a few favors from back in the old days. I got them to agree to take you on their ship, the Demeanor, a large tramp freighter bound for France. They are scheduled to leave the docks just before dawn. They will not wait for you, so you must find everything you need as quickly as possible. Grave dirt, coffin, horse, and wagon. Got it. Nothing else, right? Well, come to think of it, you should really get an insane daytime guardian before you travel long distances just to be safe. What? what? Not another thing to get? This is too much. And why exactly does he have to be insane? Yeah, at best it sounds a little unwise to travel with nutcases, especially over long distances. Come on, think about it, you two. All vampires must find a mortal living human to guard over them during the day, in case the righteous brothers or their brethren discover your coffin and decide to stake you in your pajamas. An insane guardian simply works the best. For one thing, they are more easily controlled. Two, they get less grossed out by the sight of blood and corpses. And three, uh, I forget three, just trust me. They are essential to have for any sun-fearing vampire. But forget it, never mind, we are short on time. You can worry about the insane daytime guardian when you get to Paris. Let's go already. We have a long night and a lot to do. Thank you so much for your help. My pleasure, child. I will do whatever I can to help you along your perilous journey. It appears to be a rubber chicken with a pulley. It's actually real. It's a real rubber chicken? No, it's a real chicken. A real chicken? Made of rubber? No, it's a real chicken. No rubber. 
What is it for? To eat! You eat rubber chickens? No, it's... Oh, child, speak no more to me for at least ten seconds. Can you do that for me? Mm-hmm. Rather strange symbol. It looks like the letter C. Sweetness. That's a very strange and unusual symbol. What an odd looking symbol. I wonder what it means. Probably nothing. Or maybe it's just the primary symbol of an all powerful secret society that controls world affairs. It could go either way. Apparently, it's a magical tiki monster-faced bulletin board. What the hell is that? I have no idea. I'm just reading the description. It looks like a head, only smaller. Whoever he was, I bet he had the custom order his hats. It's a beautiful hourglass. It's a large ball made of crystal. Otherwise known as a crystal ball. Witches use them to see other places and times. Isn't that right, Madame Strigoi? Have you seen anything good lately? Uh, not really. During the summer, I mostly get reruns. Was that your voice I heard in my head? Uh, yes, I, I have the ability to send messages to those who are, shall we say, sensitive to the supernatural. How did you know my name? I have been watching you two ever since Mona came to Draxylvania and was imprisoned by Shroudy in the castle. What goes on in Castle Varg interests me very much. But I don't want to bore you with all that right now. Watching us all the time, eh? Huh? Maybe you should change your name to the nosiest nosy person to ever stick a nose where it doesn't belong. You better be nice to me, Froderick. I know all about you and your troubles. I'm sure the Belfry boys would like to know that you have finally left the safety of the castle. Oh, well, what I meant to say was, you should be called the most forgiving forgiver who ever forgave things that should definitely be forgiven. That work for you? Forgiven. For now. Why have you summoned me here? I know your plight. And I know how best to prepare you for your journey home. Oh, good! What plight? Mona, she means your, you know, transformation into a, you know, V-A-M-P-I-R-E? V-A-M... Oh, vampire! <laughs> I am most definitely not a vampire. Fortrick is so silly. Really? You're not a vampire? Then how do you explain the sleeping by day in the coffin, no less, the drinking of blood and turning into a bat, eh? Explain that, smarty pants. I don't drink blood. Yuck. It's just... Yeah, yeah, I heard. Salty tasting Merlot. Listen, honey, I have news for you. Shroudy killed you, drained you of blood, fed you some of his blood, then brought you back to Castle Varg as a vampire. You better learn to accept that pretty quick. <laughs> there, there, no need to cry. I'm here to help you get back to Paris. As a vampire, you can live an extraordinary life, or unlife as it were. It will be wonderful, and just as fulfilling as a regular... Uh, life. Don't let it get you down. Child, just do what I say and you'll be fine. Willie? Truly? Thank you for your kindness. I will listen. I'm all pointed ears. Tell me what I have to do. Hang on a second, Puts. We don't even know you. What does it know? I am a gypsy fortune teller who looks after favored vampires. Plus, anything I can do to annoy Baron Shroudy just brightens my day. See, Fortrick? 
Nothing to worry about. She's just a good Samaritan, that is all. I don't know. I think the knower of all things knows some things she doesn't want us to know. Relax, Froderick. I feel bad for Mona. It isn't her fault what happened to her. I just want to help the poor girl out. What is up with the creepy music? I tried playing country music for a while, but it just didn't seem to work. The sun burns my skin, my best friend's back. The mirror shows me nothing, I smell like a rat. Oh, I'm just a vampire girl. When the moon comes up, I wake with the start. I'm feeling so sad, like I got a stake in my heart. Oh, I'm just a vampire girl. Now that is scary. Do you want to hear the verse where her carriage breaks down and her dog runs away? No! Uh, no thank you! Fine, suit yourself. I'm easy. You seem to know so much about us. How is that possible? I'm afraid that is a very long story. Well, lady, we have nothing better to do. So shoot. The story begins many, 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 many years ago. On second thought, lady, I have bad circulation problems and can't sit for long stretches of time. I was born in Romania in 1829. My mother was a famous gypsy fortune teller, renowned throughout the land for her mystical arts and crafts. Crafts? Yes. My mother used to make these cute little paper mache cat figures, only it was cats doing human things. You know, cats driving a wagon, cats plowing the field, cats being burned at the stake. Always good for a laugh. Yes, well, never mind the crafts. It's the mystical arts that concern your story. As I grew older, my mother began to instruct me in the ways of magic, but her knowledge was limited, and as I grew older, my hunger for power increased. Soon I sought out others beyond my mother to teach me what they could. In time, I grew far more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Did you know that with great power comes great responsibility? And usually some colorful types. Waldrick, stifle! Please continue. Soon, I realized that I had reached the limit of what mere mortals could teach me. My skills could only be increased by looking beyond this world. I began to research the world of supernatural beings, demons, werewolves, mummies, and of course, vampires. How did you find this information? Let's just say I happened to find a lot of like-minded people and we, uh, exchanged information. My power and knowledge grew quite a bit while I was associating with these people. Gee, you don't say. I do say. But I got more than I bargained for. My desire for power made me do things I didn't realize I was capable of doing. Oh my! If you don't mind me asking, what sort of things? I am ashamed to admit it, but I acquired this arcane knowledge in less than honest ways. I get it. The five-fingered discount. You know. It would only take me two fingers to place a curse on you that would last five generations. Yeah? Well, it would only take one finger for me to tell you what I think of you and your curses. Oh, Fladzik, stop it! She's being honest with us. Don't antagonize her. Please go on, Madame Strigoi. Thank you, sweetheart. There isn't much more to say. I have led a life of foul deeds and shame, and now in my waning years, I have made it my soul in life to undo any evil I have done, correct my wanton mistakes, and in general try and set wrongs to right. Tonight, I will correct the wrong that has been done to you by getting you on the path home to Paris. Au revoir! It's a rather amazing symbol. Just looking at it makes me think of humor, creativity, and a passion for adventure. Games? Fodrick, we don't have time to play games right now. Maybe once we are on the ship.
It's a primitive cultural mask. And when I say primitive, I mean just as valid as any other culture on God's green earth. It's an incense burner. From the smell of the wagon, Madame Strugoy has been using it a lot. Trust me when I tell you it's better than the alternative. I had Constable Otto in here earlier, and the cabbage he had for dinner was playing havoc with his system. Madame Strugoy said to get my coffin now, so I better not wander off and explore. Yeah, you better not go back to her empty-handed, or she'll give you more hours of mind-numbing exposition. Quiet, Fodrick! She is a nice, wise, elderly lady trying to help us out. Show some respect. Besides, I think she can hear you. I can't, so watch your mouth, rodent. Oh, cripes! And toast! Just kidding. I hate this place. Let's go. It's the horse flyer. It says horse for sale. Good condition, low mileage, 200 crowns or best offer. See Gina Martinelli, 24700 McBean Parkway, Vlad's Landing. I really a vampire. Be sure before you bite. It says Table of Contents. Section 1 for the novice vampire. Section 2 for the journeyman vampires. Section 3 for master vampires. Do you mind reading this for me? It says, in a nutshell, that you can bite people on the neck and drain their blood till they pass out. But you should do it when no one will see you. is, uh, resting quietly, I'll take my coffin back to Madame Strigoy's camp. bottle of ink. It's a very dark color. I have a feeling this might come in handy. Madame Stugoy, may I have this bottle of ink over here? Yes, child. Knock yourself out. It's a box of donuts and a strange metal bottle with what smells like coffee. Yep, everything a horizontally growing constable needs. I don't want those. They look all eaten up anyway. Even the bear claw. Dang. 
It's a sleeping constable. Your first victim. Victim? I didn't attack him. I just borrowed some thing from him that made him sleep deeply for a while. It's a sign for the graveyard, and apparently picnic grounds, too. The sign says, for whom does the bell toll? It tolls for me. Ring bell for service. Sincerely, Proprietor Dan Smith. Well, at least it appears that Mr. Smith has a sense of humor. It says, don't feed the ghouls. Don't worry, I won't. It's the caretaker's office for the graveyard. You were gonna find your grave. That's where we need to go. The caretaker has to have a map of the graveyard available. I... can't... move up the path for some reason. What do you mean? The crosses on the gravestone, they hurt. I can't seem to approach them. Oh, boy. I was afraid of this. You're not going to be able to walk through the graveyard with all those crosses everywhere. It's a bell. The sign says we should ring it for service. You should ring that bell. Ring that bell. Let me give this bell a ring and see if anybody's home. No luck. He must not be here. That might be a good thing. I imagine it would be awkward to explain why we're out here in the middle of the night trying to retrieve a box of your grave dirt. I think I could fly up there, but I wouldn't be able to land due to all the crosses repelling me. It's the damnable Castle Vog, the site of my former prison. Before I die, I vow to see it utterly destroyed. I'll take it apart brick by brick if necessary. Uh, Mona, you know, um, you're already technically dead, so you kind of missed your deadline. It's a barrel. I wonder what it's full of. Rainwater. Why? What do you think it's full of? If I had to guess, I'd say rainwater. But it's what's under the rainwater that interests me most. Maybe inside that barrel is the decaying body of Mr. Martinelli's business partner. After a heated argument one night, Mr. Martinelli killed his business partner, chopped his body into tiny little pieces, and sealed it inside the barrel, afraid that dragging the barrel away might arouse suspicion. Mr. Martinelli decided to hide it in plain sight, but now, every time he walks past it, he thinks he hears the muffled screams of his business partner saying, Why? 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 Oh, Frogic, what did I tell you before? Reading too many books is going to rot your brain. Ooh, it's garlic. Ooh, it smells so bad I can't get close to it. There's no way I'll be able to approach the door while it's still hanging there. It's a window that's been broken from the inside. Based on the spiderweb effect created as the window was breached, the object in question was metallic, approximately 4 inches long, with a total weight not exceeding 27.5 grams. I would estimate the object in question flew no more than 23 meters. That's adjusting for a moderate wind, of course. Wow, Mona! 
You're either a great detective or had a distinguished career as a cat burglar before you moved on to opera. It's a wheel. I wonder what it's for. a humanoid figure. It's actually called the snowman. Oh, really? And how do you know he's a man? Eh, because he's got snow, but I'm not gonna say it. There are probably kids around. It's a hayloft. Yuck! It's an entire room filled with scarecrow in it. For the dress shop. Actually, Mona, it's a dress shoppy. That is stupidy. It's a door to the dress shop. For some reason, I can't get close to it. It's the cross hanging above the door. Just like at the boathouse, the cross is keeping you away. You don't happen to have another animated golem body tucked away in that dress of yours, do you? Preferably one that's about 10 meters tall? No, I'm afraid not. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to find another way to deal with that cross. Maybe we should take a look at the Vampire for Dumkoff book that Madame Strigoi gave you. Forge? Would you do the honors? Uh, it says, in a nutshell, that vampires wear black cloth because it protects them from holy magic, uh, such as holy water, crosses, and the sun. color to you. He looks like a charcoal flavored snow cone. It's some sort of frozen statue depicting a humanoid figure. It's actually called the snowman. Oh, really? And how do you know he's a man? Eh, because he's got snow, but I'm not gonna say it. There are probably kids around. Snowball at it. Maybe I can cover it up. A snowball fight where the target can't fight back? Those are my kind of odds. I've seen better arms on a chair. But it looks like you got the job done. The black inky snowball covered it up pretty good.
What's wrong, Mona? The door's open. What are you waiting for? Head on in. I can't. For some reason, I can't cross the threshold of the doorway. I wonder if this has anything to do with the fact that you are currently life-challenged. Life-challenged? Just trying to be polite. I know it's a bit of a touchy subject. Oh, you with your silly vampire theories. It's only a curse. That is, until I find a way to cure myself. Okay, so maybe the fact that you can't enter the store has something to do with the fact that you're a walking corpse. Uh, I mean, you're a vampire. Frodrick? Would you mind reading this for me? My crow's feet are sore. Sore my ear? All right, fine. In a nutshell, it says you can't enter homes without being invited in first. You also can't enter if they have holy symbols, garlic, red or white roses, or hawthorn branches on the entrance. It's the open and close sign for the store. It says they are closed right now. Let's see what this says on the other side. Pork chops, woman! I deny. It's the open and close sign for the store. It says they are closed right now. Surprise, surprise! Instead of closed, it says open. Wow, that one really caught me off guard. Can you tell me what this sign says? I'm afraid I don't have my reading glasses. Y yes! Uh, it, it says, yes, we are open! Please come in! I wonder how that got turned around. Oh well. That did it, Fodrick! I suddenly feel different. I feel I can walk into this shop now. Pretty sneaky, sis. Uh, I mean, Mona. Machine. What are the odds of finding it here, in a dress shop? It's a dress made for a toddler. Oh, and it's so cute. It's a pair of toy muskets. What's wrong, Fodrick? I'm just disappointed. For a second there, I thought maybe we were gonna get to shoot somebody. It's a lot of brightly colored cloth. It's a very fat man who seems not at all motivated to do anything for himself. I'll probably regret this, but... May I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, why the hell not? Why are you so rude to your wife? Sometimes you need to put a woman in her place, which is sure to be in the kitchen grabbing me another beer. Why aren't you working? I'm out on a disability. I have a mental anguish over having to work more than six straight hours. It nearly drove me mad. And I think I may have a permanent mental damage. No argument there. How come you drink so much? Have you seen my kids? And <laughs> need I say more? Don't you think you should be nicer to your wife? 
Ah, don't you think you should be nicer to me, eh? Uh, perhaps we could continue this uh, discussion over a bottle of wine at a local tavern, I know. <laughs> Low lights, uh, music, private booth, <laughs> but lose the band. You're disgusting! I think I better go before I do something that I'll regret. Don't worry, baby. You can do whatever you want. I promise. I won't regret it after. <laughs> Too bad Inky ate our mace. I have a desire to bury it in the top of his head. It's the kitchen. My, there are a lot of dishes stacked up in there. Yes, I, I'm reorganizing my collection of Draxylvanian limited edition missing persons dishes. Each one has a lovely hand-painted image painstakingly hand-painted by a bereaved family member of the missing person. They make lovely Christmas presents. I plan to sell them door to door to make a little extra cash on the side when I'm not so busy. Not sure when that will be. It's a chair. People usually use them to keep their backsides off the ground. Hello in there! Anyone else in there? No one else. Just me. I don't have any hired help. What would I need them for? Excuse me, miss. Can we speak with you for a moment? A moment is about all I have. Why aren't your kids asleep? I haven't had a chance to sing to them yet. I always sing them to sleep. Unfortunately, my husband is rather demanding and rather hungry as well, and it's going to be a while before he finishes his dinner. I used to sing at Zeppelli Opera. Perhaps I could sing for them. Would that help you? Certainly. If you can get my kids to fall asleep, then once my husband finishes his dinner, I should be able to help you out with whatever you need. Why is your husband so hungry? Good question. Apparently, sitting around on your ass all day doing nothing but drinking, yelling, and passing gas that could choke a mule generates quite an appetite. How did you meet your husband? When I was many years younger, my father accidentally ran him over with our family carriage. The magistrate ordered my father to pay for his medical expenses, but my family didn't have any money, so I agreed to live with him and work as his servant to pay off the debt. And since the two of you fell in love? No! And then my family's house burnt down and I had no place left to go. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale that Ed Gallen Poe might have written. Have you ever thought about leaving your husband? I've thought about it ten times since you first entered the room. Unfortunately, he owns a shop and everything in it. I would have to leave penniless and without my children. Yeah, leaving penniless would definitely be bad. Why do you have all those dishes in the kitchen? I had to take an extra job to pay for all my husband's food and beer. I earned a little money selling gift plates door to door and washing dishes. Without the extra income, he would eat everything and the kids would go hungry. Who is paying you to wash the dishes? I'm doing some food service work for the stadium. Tonight they're having a benefit for the Association of Draxylvanian Constables. I already finished cooking for them. In fact, I just doused my cooking fire. Now I have to wash all of their dishes. In addition to that, I have to stack and organize the gift plates in a special way so they're easier to sell door to door. I make everyone stay out of the kitchen. What are your children's names? Siegfried and Roy. I bet they get picked on a lot. True. Not the most manly names in the world, but again, my husband likes them. He thought it would toughen them up if they got picked on a lot. So far, I think it just made them more hyperactive, insensitive, and demanding. Still, gotta love them! No, you don't got to. Shh! Do you happen to have any black cloth available? Yes, I think I have some stashed away someplace. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna have time to get it for you until my kids are asleep and my husband is done with his dinner. 
Thank you for talking with us. filled with dirty laundry. It looks like these kids get into everything. Their shirts are covered with mud, chocolate sauce, paint, blood, and what appears to be bear feces. These kids must be a lot to handle. It's a poster for the local sports team. The Vlad's Landing All Blacks. It appears to be a Queen Victoria action figure. I wonder if they also have the Prince Albert Summer Playhouse set. It features a built-in tea set, fox hunting stallions, and of course, a jacuzzi. It looks like a book of sinister spells. The only spell that casts is repel hot chicks in a 30-foot radius. of random objects. That's a rather odd-looking item. I wonder what it's used for. Parents use those to give themselves a break from their kids. It's a drawing of something. If I had to guess, I'd say it's either a picture of a female werewolf carrying a beer stein or a very angry bunny with an axe in its hand. those Beano babies? Those have to be the lamest collectible of all time. I collect teapots. Those Beano babies have to be the second lamest collectible of all time. It's Siegfried and Roy, Madame Stoker's two children. Active little munchkins, aren't they? We've got to find some way to get them to sleep. Otherwise, Madame Stoker won't have any time to help us. It's an interesting collection of flying objects. Hi there. My name is Mona. Can you sing a song for us? Please? We like to hear songs while we're falling asleep. Yes, of course. want Who Let the Wolves Out. Can you sing Who Let the Wolves Out? I'm afraid I don't know the lyrics to Who Let the Wolves Out. But I do happen to know several beautiful French lullabies, many of which have been passed down for hundreds of... Who Let the Wolves Out? Who Let the Wolves Out? I don't think they want to hear anything else. Where did you boys hear that song? They play it at the stadium all the time. It's our favorite song. Can you teach it to me? If you do, I'll be happy to sing it to you. We don't know all the words. Sing it to us or we won't talk to you anymore. Who let the wolves out? Such lovely children. <laughs> I wonder if they'd fit through that window. Shush, Frederick. I'm going to have to find a way to learn that song. Otherwise, I don't think these children will ever go to sleep. It's some kind of chest.
It's a banner for Manchester Divided. It says Scarlet Bovine Memorial Stadium Gate 34. There's a game going on right now. I wonder if the security is pretty tight in there. It's probably tighter now than normal. I read this match is to benefit the Draxylvanian Constables Association. My name is Mona de Lafitte. What's yours? Detective Lou Crane at your service. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss de Lafitte. How long have you been assigned to this stadium? I've been doing stadium duty for two years now and I love it. In that time, I might add, illegal attendance has been cut by over 92%. Only 92%? You seem to be quite a responsible security guard. How is the other 8% getting past you? I've asked myself that question many times. The only thing I can conclude is that somehow they're sneaking through a side door. And where would this side door be located? And how come you haven't locked it? Well, it is locked, but somehow those pesky 8% keep getting in. I'm afraid I cannot disclose its exact location, as that would be a rather serious breach of security. It's the uh, athlete's entrance, and the goth of the United team has made me swear never to reveal its location, especially to anyone from Gothic Falls. How do you like working your stadium assignment? Very much so. I get to see all kinds of games, famous athletes, and the occasional stadium concert. Why, Van Halden themselves played here last month. That Edward Van Halden plays himself a mean oboe. How did you earn such a cushy assignment? The position actually opened up after the 1893 championships. After the Gosford United lost the game again, the fans rioted, and the old constable who had the assignment was trampled to death. So, the position became available. Quite a lucky break, actually. I'm not sure the poor old guy who was trampled to death would agree with you. How can I get a ticket for the game? Sorry, madame. I'm afraid this event is only for constables, their families, and the people the constables sold their tickets to, and the scalpers they sold those tickets to, and the people who bought those scalp tickets. <laughs> this match between Vlad's Landing All Blacks and Gotham Falls United, a huge long-standing rivalry, has been sold out for weeks. Worked on any interesting cases? Oh, goodness, where do I start? I have a million ones to tell you about, all full of brilliant twists, turns, and wonderful detective work by me. <laughs> Which case you want to hear? I have all night. You won't be disappointed. Good one, Mona. How about your first case? That ought to be short. The year was 1865, and I had just completed my four extra years in Draxylvania Detective School. Nope, you were wrong. As usual. Most young rookies do not have the privilege of being asked into detective school. But you see, I was a captain of the Junior Occult Hunters of Draxylvania Society. An organization that I started thanks in part to the money I got from a bounty that practically fell into my lap. Conditions that gets worse the longer somebody drones on and on and on. Fine, I'll get the hint. I bore you, is that it? No, no, you just bore my feet. The rest of me is in thrall. Maybe you should go home and sit down then. Any other questions I can answer before you go home to spare your feet? Thank you. I need to go now. Good evening to you then. It appears he's patrolling the area around the entrance to that dark alley. Saintons, how can I help you?
Do you work for the salon? Work has such a negative connotation. I like to think that I live my life in the pursuit of pleasure. Mine and others. My relationship with the salon allows me to pursue these personal interests while simultaneously providing me with an ongoing source of income. <laughs> right now I'm standing lookout for a private nail salon event going on inside. What sort of work do you do? I like to think of myself as a small event planner. Or possibly a personal entertainer. In terms of the specific services I offer, that generally depends on how much my client is willing to spend. Was there something particular you had in mind? Uh-oh, Mona. That constable over there is eyeing you pretty closely. You'd better be careful, or you might get picked up for solicitation. Solicitation? Solicitation of what? Mona, you seem to be having some difficulty grasping the situation. This lovely lady here... Why, thank you! <laughs> and I might say you are by far the most attractive bat I have ever encountered. You're too kind. Anyway, Mona, to put it bluntly, this woman is, uh, well, she does stuff to make people happy. Especially penicillin manufacturers. Oh, I, I guess I understand. I think... Forgive me, I don't have much experience in these, um, areas. There's nothing to forgive, darling. You know, you are quite attractive. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing right now, but would you ever consider a career change? We offer flexible hours and an excellent benefits package. We would have to put a little more foundation on those cheeks, though I'm afraid you're looking rather pale. Sure. Sounds great. I love doing nails. Where do I sign up? Whoa, Mona. Trust me. This isn't the right nail salon for you. Besides, don't you want to go to Paris and sing opera? You're right. I do. But she made her life seem so glamorous and fulfilling. Do I get two weeks of vacation and ten days of sick leave? You're gonna need a lot more sick leave. What are you talking about? I'm not judging you. I'm just saying we should be discreet. What is so illegal about talking to someone? There's nothing wrong with pleasant social intercourse. Why are you standing out here in the cold? You can thank Constable Bud Crane, the cop standing over there. He's not a big fan of the nail salon services. So, I have to stand watch to warn the private party we are having inside, in case Constable Crane decides to have a raid. Believe me, I'd rather be inside nice and warm. What private party? We'll keep this on the down low, but Burgermeister Willem Vinton and a bunch of his cronies from the next village over are having some... <clears throat> political discussions in there. Very delicate ones, and they don't want to be disturbed. Disturbed by whom? The Vice Squad. Vlad's Landing Vice, which Constable Blood Crane over there is the head of, doesn't like my business practices and is constantly trying to shut me down. But we are so good at nails <laughs> that the politicians keep allowing us to reopen. Why would Constable Crane not like a nail salon? Oh, I have a bunch of theories on that. And none of them good. My leading theory is that he has a serious inferiority complex. Because his older brother Lou is such a big town hero. And overshadows Bud at every turn. So to compensate for his... <laughs> shortcomings. He's way too wound up. He really needs to get... Well, get... Relieved of his duties for harassing a perfectly harmless nail salon? Yes, exactly. If he'd go away or someone got rid of him, that would be a relief. Believe you me. Can we go inside your nail salon? Sorry, honey. No can do. Why not? The salon has been reserved by a private party. I'm doing double duty as doorman and lookout. 
So unless you are part of the Gothard Falls City Council, I can't let you in. May I ask your name? Certainly. Today, my name is Iris Vivienne. What do you mean by today? Your name changes? Of course. My name changes with my mood. I'm in an Iris mood today, but tomorrow I may be somebody else. My customers enjoy a certain level of variety. Might I ask your name? Mona! My name is Mona. Well, what a quinky dink. I use the name Mona all the time. It is a perfect name for a woman in my profession. Ha! <laughs> and what is so gosh darn funny? Nothing. That's a lovely dress. May I ask where you purchased it? But of course. I bought this dress at Madame Stoker's dress shop. She does excellent work. Although sometimes it's difficult to get an appointment with her due to Madame Stoker leading a fairly hectic life. Why is Madame Stoker's life so hectic? She has two young children who keep her very busy. And a very demanding husband who is a bit of a gluttonous louse. Although he is an excellent customer. I was wondering if you might do us a favor. I guess that depends on what the favor is. My favors usually cost money. There is a man conducting the constable's orchestra, and we're very interested in reviewing his song list. Unfortunately, he won't let us see it. If you could distract him for us, perhaps we would be able to modify his list. I'm afraid I can't afford to leave the area. I have to stand lookout for our private nail salon party going on inside. The Burgermeister paid me specifically to stand guard and watch Constable Bud Crane over there, so no can do, honey. Can we pay you for your time? Perhaps we can exchange favors. As I mentioned before, Constable Crane over there is very much cramping our outfit style. If you can find some way to convince him to leave his post, I could leave for a while without worry and distract this band leader of yours. How can we get the constable off the street? I have no idea. We've tried bribing him without much success, but has some sort of high and mighty code of ethics. He's always trying to look like a hero. <laughs> His brother, Lou's the real hero. Saves people from drowning in fires all the time. Been decorated five times. Bud is always in his shadow, but both of them are a real pain in the... That is enough. Thank you for the information. That's all the questions I have for now. Very well. Uh, if you happen to see a lonely, wealthy man wandering about, please do send him my way. going on inside. It's a constable. It appears he's patrolling the area around the entrance to that dark alley. Excuse me, sir. Might we have a few words with you? Of course, Fräulein. Do you require assistance? Is that bat threatening you? No. He's actually a friend of mine. But thanks for asking. You seem eager to help. That I am. It was my dream to be a member of the Deals, the Draxylvanian Elite Air, Land and Sea Rescue Squad. But I was unable to qualify for the service, so I had to settle for being a constable. What happened? Why did you fail to qualify? 
I have a condition known as FC, which stands for Fragile Coccyx. Uh, apparently, due to the occasional bout of anemia and limited access to vitamins as a child, my coccyx does not have the strength to withstand the arduous training curriculum. Why did you want to be a member of the deals? They stand for truth, justice, and the Draxylvanian way. And most importantly, they help people in need. There is also my secondary motivation of trying to escape my brother's shadow. What does your brother have to do with this? My brother was one of the first deals. On his inaugural mission, he saved an entire village from being destroyed when floods caused the spillway of the Lake Varg Dam to malfunction. Ever since then, he's been known throughout the land for his heroic deeds. Haven't you had a chance to do anything heroic? Sure. I've stopped a few pickpockets, prevented the occasional murder, and harassed that cat house across the way out of business. Nail salon, my... Where was I? Oh yes, but I've never done anything that's been recognized. What sort of recognition are you looking for? I want the town to know me as a hero. A key to the city would be nice. But most importantly, I want them to look at me and say, There is Constable Crane. He saved somebody. If I could only help somebody truly in need. This guy is a real piece of work. What sort of person would you want to help? Perhaps an elderly person? No, I know, a child. If I could save a child from some hideous fate, the old town would sing my praises. Settle? Constable sounds like an exciting and rewarding job. It can be, but this job can also suck the life right out of you. The endless social problems and crime-ridden slums wear you down eventually? No, I mean literally. We lose half our constables each year due to blood loss from animal bites. I'm beginning to suspect it may be the work of... Uh, oh, forget it. What? Tell me. Jackalopes. Vampiric jackalopes. This guy is out of his gourd. Listen. These creatures survive on the blood of others and burrow deep into graves to sleep during the day. I think they are behind the attack of anemia that has been plaguing Draxylvania over these many years. But no one will listen, except you. You believe me, don't you? My, what lovely weather we are having. <sighs> that was one dream. Surely you have other dreams and aspirations. I wanted to be a member of Lake Watch, a team of Draxylvania's best-looking lifeguards. I wanted to be able to save lives and show my brother E isn't the only hero in the Crane family. Why didn't you join? I tried out. I broke every speed and strength record they had. But in the end, they said I wasn't photogenic enough. Why are you out here all alone? The Burgermeister gave the cushy stadium gate job to my brother Lou and stuck me with watching the nail salon. Just because Lou saved the Burgermeister's family from a pack of werewolves that attacked them during their Christmas feast. Wow! How on earth did he do that? <laughs> it's no big deal. Lou just gathered some hair samples from a previous werewolf attack, then analyzed them in his basement lab where he discovered some iridium-rich deposits in the fur. Lou then deduced the iridium could only come from a meteor crater, so he went up to Chillblood Crater wearing a hand-stitched werewolf costume that he'd sprayed with synthetic female werewolf urine and infiltrated the pack for three weeks. During the attack, he sprayed the entire pack with liquid silver nitrate, incapacitating all of them except the leader. He then fought the pack leader on the top tower of the Burgermeister's house, while the leader used the Burgermeister's daughter as a shield. Lou used psychological baiting to catch the pack leader off guard so he could slay the beast with his own silver dagger. Lou is such a glory hog, I swear. He did all that just to make me look bad so I get stuck out of here while he got the cushy stadium job. He is always doing that. Lou is such a manipulator. I'm Mona de Lafitte, mighty opera singer. Who are you? Constable Bud Crane at your service. If there is trouble afoot, I'm your man. Is there anything I can help you with, Fraulein? You look new in town. I was a guest of the, uh, Gina Martinelli. Until today, that is. I'm trying to get back to Paris, so I'm looking for transport down to the port tonight. No, any? No coaches come through here in the winter. And I'm afraid the old town, except me. 
is that the big game going on in the stadium? I'll suggest you wait till tomorrow afternoon, after the town sleeps off the drunken stupor. Do you know the Baron Shroudy von Kiefer? The Baron? I've never met him, but he's known around these parts for his rather unusual personality, especially around tall women. <laughs> now they say his mother was even weirder. Some of the things I've heard about her would keep you up at night. It's strange Baron Shroudy's not here tonight, since he is the owner of the Vlad's Landing All Black Sports franchise. Makes me suspicious. Um, why is that? I heard a report from my cousin Otto, a glory hog himself, that the Baron's boat, clothes and a coffin were found by the late shore, but no Baron. I bet it was a gypsy witch Strigoi. Never trusted her kind. Otto was supposed to report in over an hour ago to spell me, but hasn't shown up. I bet he's passed out drunk somewhere. Just my luck. Can this night get any worse? Tell me about Vlad's Landing. Vlad's Landing? Not much to tell. It used to be a small hill town called Vlad's Lot, until a rich creepy writer named Stefan Rex moved in and founded a sports stadium. Apparently he's a big sports fanatic. It used to be named after him until Scarlet Bovine bought the naming rights last year. Anywho, when they dammed the Varg River, it became a center of trade for all the local villages on the lake and its tributaries, and was renamed Vlad's Landing. What happened to this writer? Ah, he went insane when he borrowed a ton of money from the old Baron to fund a horrible play called Wagons. Get this, the story was about wagons coming to life, running people over and terrorizing a group of people stuck in a livery stable. It was so stupid, the play closed down during the first act. He lost it all, money, respect and his sanity. I think he's an inmate now at Dr. Legume's Asylum for the Sanity Challenged. Erdy still writes for the Insanity Today magazine. A magazine buying for asylum inmates. I'm new here. Would you tell me about Draxylvania? The Draxylvania is just a group of baronies nested high up in the Draxylvanian Alps. It is a semi-independent country within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We're known for our odd customs, beliefs and mythologies. Like what? Well, some of the big ones are, uh, our nobles only come out at night, we all use garlic way too much, cover the doors, windows, even bathe in it. Um, some neighboring countries call us Stinksylvania because the garlic smell often wafts over their countries doing high winds. Uh, let's see, we put crosses everywhere and we're constantly being plagued by some sort of weird disease. Uh, it's either lycanthropy one year, spontaneous anemia the next, or random outbreaks of insanity and paranoia. It's as if this land was cursed by God, or the spirits of all things pure and holy. Eh, but it's home. What's in that dark alley back there? It leads to the back of the stadium and the side door. Athletes and event staff only. Other than that, just a few boxes of junk and old sports equipment and the like. Of course, it is a dark alley. We have had a few incidents take place in there. I have been pleading with the city council to light the darn thing up, but they say their budget is taken up with the new public anti-anemia campaign. Just say no to night visitors. I like to stay near the alley entrance, just in case something happens again. Well, that is enough for now. I need to go. It's a dress made for a toddler. Oh, and it's so cute. That dress might come in handy for something. I better not take it now, but I'll keep it in mind just in case. For Drake? 
you may not want to do this. In fact, you will probably hate me for asking this, but, well, if you don't terribly mind, I, I mean, if you don't mind terribly, uh... What is it already? Will you dress up and drag for me with the baby dress we just saw in the dress shop window? Please? What for? I don't know yet, but you dressed up like a little girl might be useful at some point. Oh, jeez. Let me think about it. Okay, fine. But it better be a really, really good idea. Important, and not some joke. No joke. And I promise no joking. Well, maybe a little joking. Forget it. No, 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 no. I promise no joking. Pinky swear? Pinky swear. All right, fine. But I just know I will never live this down, and I will only do it once. After that, never again. Ever. I just had a thought. Uh-oh. Duck for cover. No, seriously. Remember the little baby dress we saw in the dress shop window? Yes. The one you said might fit me? Yes. I was thinking we should lure this constable away from his post, and then I could... Uh, um... Uh, I could... Drain him a bit till he passes out? I see where you're going. You hide in the alley back there, put me in the dress, and I lure him in there with some phony catch like I'm being attacked? Yes, exactly. Will you wear a dress for me, Fadwick? Oh, boy. You owe me big time. But okay, just this once. I will never put on a dress for you again. Ever. Got that? Ever again. Yes. I promise never to ask you to do it again. I swear on my own grave. Not sure how good an oath that is, but fine. You go hide, and I'll go get the dress. I'll lure him with cries for help, then you, uh... Well, you just bite him. Not too hard. Whatever. Not too hard. Then Miss Floozy over there will be happy. Great! Let's do it. Why do I have a feeling it isn't gonna be that easy? Yahoo! Hey! Get that back! I'm saving it in case I have a baby girl. Good evening, little girl. Ah! Help me! I've fallen down a well and I can't get up! Someone save me! I'll save you! Hang on, little girl, I'm coming! Hello down there, Constable Crane. Is everything all right? We thought we heard a noise. I could have sworn that I heard something. Oh well, perhaps I should return to my post. Enjoy your party. He can't get through. We better try something else. Quite filled with garbage and trash.
so. Good evening, little girl. Ah! Help me! I've fallen down a well and I can't get up! Someone save me! I'll save you! Hang on, little girl, I'm coming! Constable Bud Quain, looking for the lost little girl. And I don't think he can be seen by those people in the windows. I hate to do it, but if I must, I must. Hey! Ah! Mona, he's out like a light. I hated to do it, but then again, it seemed kind of fulfilling. And I'm in a much better mood. I'm starting to get used to this biting and draining thing. You didn't, uh, drain him all the way. I don't think so. Jack, is he still breathing? Yep, still breathing. Your record is murder-free. 2-0. Oh. Good job. We'll make a full-fledged and moral vampire out of you yet. It's an access badge to the stadium. This all-access badge will be quite useful. It's a poster for the Waven Goth Guy Art Experience. It says he's the hottest new artist to hit Gothford Falls since the Azrael of the Quo's Art Experience. It's a window overlooking the alley. There sure are a lot of people in there. Yeah, based on all the noise, I'd say they're partying like it's 1899. Hello? Quiet out there. I'm having a dinner party. Mona, what are you doing? I was just testing to see if they were paying attention to the alley. Looks like they are. will be out of action for a while. Oh, thank you, thank you. I have no idea how you did it. This is going to improve my business significantly. Now I believe there is something I need to do for you. Wait, I don't have a ticket for the game. How am I going to get in? You better find me one first, then I'll gladly help you out. Here, will this all-access pass help? I think all the constables working security for the game have one. My, my, you are resourceful. I could use a girl like you. Sure you won't change your mind about the job offer? Oh, well, it's, uh, I, uh, awfully nice offer, but I, um, uh, 
You see, I... Ah, oh, don't hurt yourself, honey. I get the picture. This path will work. Let's go. Hello, Mr. Van Leader. Hello yourself, madam. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I must say, I simply love a man in uniform. <laughs> That's interesting to hear. I myself have a thing for women without a uniform on. Or anything else for that matter. You really are a silver-tongued devil, aren't you? Do you still have a lot of songs to perform? <laughs> there are still plenty of songs to be played. However, as busy as I am, I have to say that you just moved to the top of my to-do list. Oh. How romantic. Yes, you're quite the looker. I'm a little new to the area. Perhaps you could give me directions to your apartment? Aren't you being a little bit forward? Is that not okay, my delicious little crumpet? Did you call me a strumpet? Uh, no, I said crumpet, but if you want to identify yourself as a strumpet, that works for me. <laughs> I'd also be willing to accept floozy or hussy as well. <laughs> You're clearly a big tease. And you are clearly a big jerk. Speaking of big, do you moonlight as a cantaloupe thief? I don't need to hear this from some kind of band dork. Stick that... that stick in your ear. Madam, it is called a baton. And I will play only when I am good and ready. Perhaps you should get back to your obvious profession and leave good, upstanding men like me alone. And this is free. Maybe you should go take a long walk off a short pier, you pathetic excuse of a wannabe musician. That was the worst music I have ever heard. Shut up, you harlot. You shut up, you ignoramus. A big word. Did you learn that when you <clears throat> took lessons from a local college professor? Hmm? Where did you get your hat? Did you tell somebody you wanted to wear something that resembled a fuzzy toilet on your head? <laughs> you should talk. Where did you get that dress? Not a virgin, Megastore? Harlots are us? Shouldn't you be getting home? Your mother is calling you. Scumbag! Street walker! Butt wipe! Harlot! Nincompoop! Now that he's distracted, Jackass. I have access to the Wench. playlist. Idiot. Hustler. Geek. Loozy. Jerk. Hussy. Dirtbag. Courtesan. Impotent knave. Hag. Maggot. Slovenly troll. Weak jaw. Don't maroon. ever call, girl. Smelly bugger. Sleazy escort. There, that should do it. Man. Now I just need to get Aged him back to work. madam. Underwear breath. Pro. Poopy Street walker, super tramp, loser, working girl, scruffy looking, social blight. No, she's doing a wonderful job distracting the band leader. I don't want to stop Nerd her just now. Herder. Disease spreader, saucy strumpet, trollop, camp face. follower, nice bimbo, street walker, Forty? Can you do something to stop her? That right. Harlot, your wish is my command. Okay, lady. Time for some serious space time. You and me. Charge! Yeah! Yeah, you! Yeah! Vamanos! Yeehaw! Roar! Ah, uh, about! Get off of me! Get out of here! Oh, watch the makeup! <laughs> oh my! Oh, the bat problem has gotten bad around here lately, hasn't it? Though I am not sad to see her go. Too bad. Seemed for a while there my evening was shaping up nicely. Oh well, back to the music. Now, what are we playing next? I seem to have forgotten. Hmm. Oh, Who Let the Wolves Out? A classic. Ready, boys? That worked! Thank you, Fodley! No problem, Mona. Now listen up, here comes the song. Got it now.
It's a song that Siegfried and Roy want me to sing to them to make them go to sleep. Hello again, boys. Did you learn how to sing the song? Indeed I did. Would you care to hear it? Yes, yes, yes! Very well. Here goes. Who let the wolves out? Wolf, wolf, wolf. Who let the wolves out? Wolf, wolf, wolf. That did it, Mona. It put him to sleep. Who knew that cheesy Oompa anthems made good children's lullabies? Madame Stoker, I am pleased to report that your children are now sleeping. Oh, thank you very much. You'll have to tell me what song you sang them. The boys can't eat if they're asleep. I can finally put out one of the stoves. Could you perhaps help us now? I'm sorry, but I'm still serving my husband his dinner. Mona, if we don't find a way to stop Mr. Gluttony over there from eating, she's never gonna have time to get us the cloth. with you for a moment. A moment is about all I have. Thank you for talking with us. to the dress shop. I can see smoke pouring out of the top of two smokestacks up there. Those chimneys look pretty small. Santa Claus is gonna need to go on a diet before he'll be able to squeeze down those. Let's take a look up there, Fodrick. Maybe there's a way in. I'm game. The smoke has stopped, so the fire is out. It's a slightly taller chimney than the other one. That won't accomplish anything, I'm afraid. Sorry. Now that the fire is out, let's see where this goes, Frederick. Sure. I always wanted to visit the exotic and secretive world of the chimney sweep. It looks like graffiti. What does that say? Santa was here. I wonder what that means. Oh, didn't you hear? The Vlad's Landing Chimney Sweep Guild wanted to start charging Santa a toll for all the scuff marks he left in the chimneys. It was this big thing where they went back and forth at City Hall and in editorials in Weasel News. Never happened. But after that, Santa was here, tags started showing up in all the chimneys, sort of in your face to the chimney sweeps. Wow! Vindictive little elf, isn't he? It looks like the skeleton of a bat. Uncle Rudy! You know him? Yeah. The last time I saw him, we were out flying together, and he was complaining about being cold. He said he had a great idea on how to get warm, but he didn't elaborate. So, your uncle flew into a chimney and waited until somebody started the fire? Hey, nobody ever accused Uncle Rudy of being the sharpest tool in the shed. It's a flue for the kitchen fireplace. It's closed tight. 
Let's see what this does. in order to better serve my husband and children. So never, ever shut this door. Drat! I don't need to move it right now, but it's good to know it's there just in case. I really like that to work, but it just won't. Sorry. Hmm. With Mina busy cleaning up there, now would be a good time to make sure she stays in there. Uh, hello, out there? Something has fallen in front of the door. What are you? I am your worst nightmare come true. A woman with power. Not political or social power, but black magic, which is power nonetheless. No, 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 please, please don't. I'll do anything you ask. Just don't stop the voting. Then do this. Be a good husband to your wife and treat her fairly. If I find out that you have said so much as a single insult, I'm going to come back here and finish you off. And go get a job, for goodness sake. Help your wife and kids out. But uh, my mental anguish. What kind of a job could I do? Get a job in a field you know well and love. And I'm sure your mental anguish will be gone in no time. But I'd worry about the current anguish you're about to go through. <sighs> oh, oh, uh, clam. Back. Uh. Oh my! Excuse me! It must have been all that beer he drank. I feel a little... Uh, oh, tipsy. Next time, see if you can say the whole alphabet. Uh, I see Hello, Lina has suffered there? enough. I agree. Let her out so she can bask in the glory Something of our handiwork. All in front her of distractions the door. are asleep. Or passed out due to lack of blood. One, two, three! Whoa! Thank you! Something fell in front of... Oh my god! What? What? Bruno! Bruno? Uh-oh! What? Oh, uh, we... Uh... He's asleep! Thank god! Thank you, O merciful Lord above. You have blessed me far more than you will ever know. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you! Uh, Mina? I hate to interrupt your prayer of thanks, but I was wondering if you have time to go down to your cellar and find those bolts of... Lots of black cloth! Of course, my good friend. Anything for you. Anything! Yippee! Anything for you! Let him run down and get it! Happy days are here again! The skies are blue! What's with that face? I don't know. I have this feeling of warmth and accomplishment inside, and it seems to be making me smile, and I feel good. 
What is that? Because you inadvertently did a good deed. It happens once in a while, but don't you worry. It'll pass. All you have to do is do something selfish and pop, it goes away. Trust me on this. Really? Okay, because this is too weird. It took me a while. I, I had to pull down the enormous fort the kids made with my cloth bolts, but I found it. 20 yards of my finest velvety black. And it's all yours, for free, for all your help you've given me. Wow! Thank you so much. This will be perfect. Well, good luck. We're off. To tell you. It's the crosses in the graveyard. I can't approach them. They hurt me. It's a smokestack with a lot of smoke coming out. Looks like there's a good fire going. It's a water basin. It collects water that drains from the roof. It's currently empty. It's a wagon. Probably used to move coffins throughout the graveyard. Once we find your grave and get some dirt, we should take the wagon with us. Go All Blacks! Since you dreamed Gothford star player, they're gonna cruise to victory. It's a fire for the furnace. The fire has enough fuel to burn for hours. It's the caretaker's lunchbox. Looks like he's a vegetarian. It's a drawer full of magazines, including better tombs and crypts and rat fancy. It looks like a crossword puzzle. What's a nine-letter word for a really bored bat? Um, Fordrick? That's right. Now let's move on. It's wood for the furnace. It's the caretaker's filing cabinet. Oh, we should look through his employee files to see if anybody has a history of mental illness. It looks like a map of the graveyard. That should tell us exactly where your grave is, Mona. Let's go check it out. Let's see if I can find my grave. It's probably in the area reserved for famous entertainers and singers. Yeah, right. There sure are a lot of dead people buried around here. Do you see my grave anywhere, Fordrick? Yep, got it. It looks like your grave is in quadrant A113. You were originally buried between the graves of Jay Hoffa and my hopes and dreams for the future. Now that we know where it is, we can go get some of my grave dirt. Hello again, <laughs> my beautiful dark swan. Shouty, no! Well, look what the cat coughed up. Joke all you want, you insipid little rodent. You're going to need more than a sense of humor to escape my trap. 
I've just locked the door and taken the key. I'm afraid you are trapped. I'm never going back to that castle, and I'll never love you. Try and get that through your thick head. Wouldn't you agree it's more like a gaseous head? Whatever. I would rather die than spend one more night with you living in that castle. You say you would rather die, hmm? Well, we shall see. I shall give you a couple of hours to ponder your fate. I'm sure when I return, you will be much more agreeable with my most generous offer and return with me to the castle. But for now, as punishment for your attitude, I shall leave you here. <laughs> when I return, I expect to find that you have adopted a more appropriate attitude. We did it! Fudrick! We escaped Shroudy's trap! And we positively identified the location of your grave. Let's go get us some dirt. We don't have a horse with us. But since it's such a short distance, I should be able to pull the cart. That superhuman undead strength of yours is coming in pretty handy. See, Mona, being a vampire isn't all bad. It's bad enough, trust me. And since I am a vampire, we'd better go get some of my grave dirt. If I don't have it to line my coffin, I may not survive the night. Would it help motivate you if I yelled mush when you start pulling the cart? Would you still be able to fly if I pulled your wings off? I think the answer to both of those questions is no. Anyway, let's grab a couple of those boxes and head over to your grave. We got a little digging to do. Mona, didn't I say we had some digging to do? I'd love to help. Really. But you are doing such a good job, I, I don't really get in your way. I'm not sure how much dirt we need, but I already have one full box loaded in the wagon. That should be... No, you'll never escape me. <laughs> what was that? I got a bad feeling about this. Shroudy! I have your precious black cloth, <laughs> and I know for a fact that there is none left in all of that's landing. <laughs> Without being able to cover the gravestone, <laughs> you'll never be able to pull the wagon out of here! I hate to admit it, Mona, but he's right. Hey, apparition boy, I thought you loved her. If she can't get her grave dirt back to her coffin by the time the sun rises, she'll die! If I can't have her, then nobody shall! I would rather be dead forever than spend one additional second of my life anywhere near you. So long, my love. I will see you in the afterlife. Mona, we got a little bit of a predicament here. I'm not strong enough to pull the wagon, and you can't do it if the gravestones are exposed. has landed in this accursed place and was turned to stone. I think that's actually stone carved to look like an angel. There you go again, taking the romance out of everything. It's the headstone for my grave. Looks like lover boy went all out. Apparently he had your headstone carved out of fine Italian marble and it looks like the etching is inlaid with some sort of precious metal. Mona, you have the finest headstone in the cemetery. That's great, but I'd rather... Great. You steer and I'll push. Since we are high up on this hill, you should be able to gain enough speed to drive the wagon out of the graveyard down the road and right up to Madame Strigoi's camp. And then I'll just fly out far away from the crosses. Brilliant. Who says opera stars are dumb as doornails? All nails have got nothing on you. Thanks, Frodrick. Okay, are you ready? I was born ready. Although, if truth be told, I am feeling just a tad bit apprehensive about this. I'm sure you'll do fine. Just do me a favor and be careful. It's nice to know you care. With those boxes of grave dirt. For a second there, I thought you were concerned about my well-being. Oh, don't be such a wuss. If things get hairy, just fly away. Of course, if you do that, you will be sentencing me to death, so no pressure. Ready? Go for it.
24 700 McBean Parkway. This is where the woman who is selling the draft horses lives. to approach the door while it's still hanging there. Dang, the strings holding it to the door are too strong. I can't pull it free. It's the discarded old boomerang I saw in the garbage back in the dark alleyway. Uh, Mona? What are you doing? I read somewhere that grunting like an animal improves your accuracy when throwing or playing tennis. I'll take your word for it. Let her rip. <laughs> My name is Bona de Lafitte, and I'm inquiring about the horse that you are selling. I... I'd love to help you out, but I can't right now. Is there anything I can help you with? Actually, maybe you can. You see, the door's locked, and my son threw the frickin' key out the window. Now no one can get in or out. If you help me get the door open, I'll give you the horse. Why do you talk so strangely? What are you talking about? Your accent. It's... Unlike anything I've ever heard. Oh, that? My husband and I just moved down here from New Jersey. I'd like to hear more about New Jersey. Sure. Like what? What's it like there? It's actually pretty nice. Especially once you get used to the pollution, overpopulation, traffic. It sounds delightful. Are there any operas there? Oh, yes. Really? That's what I miss the most. Not a day goes by here when I don't wish I could watch my soap operas. Soap operas? I guess we're not talking about the same kind of operas. Do you miss your homeland? I sure do. Living out here in the sticks don't hold a candle to life in the big city. What caused your son to act so rudely? Oh, I threatened to have that weird Baron Shroudy come over to babysit him if he didn't eat his turnips. I guess he really didn't want that to happen. Do you know where the key is now? Well, he threw it out the window, so it couldn't have gone far. Where did you say the key went? I don't know exactly. Somewhere out there. Beneath the pale moonlight? Sure. Whatever. I'd like some information on the horse. What do you want to know? What's the horse's name? The man we bought him from in Italy said his name is Il Cavallo Senza Valore. But we call him Buttercup. What breed is it? It's a miniature Albanian Appaloosa Halfling a Pony. That's quite an impressive sounding breed. Well, he's actually just a mutt. How old is he? I'm not sure, really. But judging by his size, I guess he's pretty young yet. When was the last time you had his shoes rotated? Oh, we regularly rotate the shoes every six months or 7,000 miles. How many kilometers has it been ridden? Well, the pedometer was broken when we bought him, but the man who sold him to us said he only had 90 kiloleagues on him, and we haven't ridden him that much since then. Would there be a better time for me to wait her? Probably, but I don't know when that would be. Why not? Like I said, I'm stuck in here, and until the key is found, there's not much I can do. Do you have another key somewhere? My husband has one, but I don't know when he'll be home from work. What does your husband do for work? He's a door-to-door -door spatula salesman. Sometimes he leaves for days at a time. That's enough information for now. Fine by me. Is 
It appears to be a well. Hey! Anybody down there? If there were, they've probably lost the ability to respond. Adventurous. I'm going to fly down into the well and look around. You go do that, and I'll stand lookout for well inspectors. Scared? No. Just concerned that exploring a strange place might make me anxious, overly alert, and panicky. Uh, but scared? Never. one that Mrs. Martinelli was looking for. Let's grab it and take it back to her. Uh, there's a slight problem. It's frozen under the ice. There's no way for us to get it out of there. Unless, of course, you have heat vision. Oh, do I? Is that one of my special vampire powers? That depends. You aren't from Krypton by any chance, are you? No, I'm from Pelly. Heat vision is out, but you do have the power to be incredibly rude to tourists. Under the ice. Oh, poor fellow. He fell into the well and couldn't get out. It's sad, Roderick, because he died cold and all alone. And buck naked. Kilroy was here. What does that mean? Don't know, but whoever wrote it really didn't like Roy. of 1874. Of Draxylvania High, no doubt. Yeah, that was the year they didn't win a single game. Apparently, after one of their worst games, the coach made everybody run laps until sunrise, and when the sun came out, all of the players exploded. A pretty common mistake with young coaches. Somebody wrote help on the wall. I'll give you one guess who. A skeleton? Good job! Now, as a reward, here's a treat. I suggest you eat that quickly before it becomes a suppository. A bat suppository. It's an old frozen bucket. Any holes in it, dear Liza? No, I don't see any. And don't call me Liza. Hmm, a bucket might be useful. I'll keep it in mind. It's the well bucket filled with the mystery stew.
Now this ought to melt you free! I think it must have... Frozen? You think? It was a good plan! Oh, man! It's the entrance to the stable. It's a barrel full of... Monkeys? Water! It's a barrel full of water. Monkey water? It'll be full of annoying bat water in a minute. It looks like a closet full of horse gear. It's a hayloft. Yuck! It's an entire room filled with scarecrow in it. You know what they say. Good fences make good neighbors. Glad we don't live next to her then. That thing's barely standing. She must be a very bad neighbor. Let's see what's in here, shall we? Oh, track bits? That was one of my favorite breakfast cereals, along with Captain Creeps and Frosted Corn Steaks. They're great! Looks like a feed bag for the horse. I hope it comes with the horse. It's a horse. Of course. So, Mr. Horse, do you know how I can get that boot thingy off of you? I speak a little, horse. Let me have a shot. Yo! <laughs> well, what did he say? He said to tell you, if he knew how to get this damn thing off, he would have done it already. Duh. He suggests we go to the lady next door and ask her about buying him. Oh, is that all? No, he also said his real name is El Cavallo Sensa Valore. Uh, no matter what that horrid woman we named him. And he would really appreciate it if we would use that name if we buy him. It's a deal if we get him. Oh, it's a poor creature. It looks like he's broken his leg. I'd say it's more likely he's broken the law. What do you mean? That's a Draxylvanian boot on his hoof. Either his owner is using it as an anti-theft device, or the Draxylvanian Police Department put it on because he has too many unpaid parking tickets. What did he say? Something along the lines of, Get this thing off my hoof right now! Well, would you look at that? It's the 1890 Girls of Draxylvania Slap-On Tools calendar. Look, this one is showing both of her calves. You men and your obsession with tools. NCC-1701? That doesn't make any sense. It would if you were socially awkward, lived in your mother's basement, and wore fake pointy ears. I don't appreciate that name. I think this world needs to offer more support to those individuals such as myself who are plasma challenged. 
plasma challenge? Hemoglobin deficient? Keep trying. I'm sure you'll come up with something. How vulgar! This was probably made by some little goth kid who got kicked out of his local angst club for wearing too much eye makeup. It says op oz teeth. I think it says O positive. Why would it say that? In case of a carriage accident? A-M-E forever. Sounds like somebody's a little full of themselves. It's a horseshoe. I bet that's somebody's lucky charm. Lucky charm, huh? I prefer green clovers, pink hearts, or blue diamonds. Weird. That's the number for our rehearsal room at the Pelly Institute of the Operatic Arts. The plate is French, too. On the bottom it says, Pa Arts, quality since 1870. Hello? Is anybody in there? Nope. No one in there. It must be safe to open. Apparently, you have never heard of the stable shed slash a massacre of 1865. No, but I'm sure I'm going to hear about it in a second. Well, not if you're going to have that attitude. Forget it. Go ahead and open it up yourself. I dare you. I want you to take a peek in here. Just as I thought, a storage shed. It looks like a very thick wool saddle blanket, colorfully embroidered with beautiful spatulas. I bet that really keeps the horses warm. Hmm. That saddle blanket could be useful, but I don't want to carry it around, so I'll keep it in mind. It's tack and harness for a horse. Of course. Not again. It's a broken old saddle. It's all dusty and cracked as if it's been through the desert. I bet on a horse with no name. Well, maybe the saddle blanket can keep the stew warm this time. Now this ought to melt you free. Yippee! That worked! Now
No way! I simply refuse to get my fingers messy. Help me out, Fodrick! What do you know about that? You found it. To be honest, I didn't think you had the smarts to ever find it. Um, thanks. I guess. Ooh. Well, let's get to the stable. I'm freezing my keister off. It's freaking cold out. There you go, Buttercup. Meet, uh, what was your name again? Mother de Lafitte, of the Parisian de Lafitte's, opera singer and par arts graduate. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, meet Mona. You belong to her now. <laughs> Quit your convention and get out of here before I sell you to the glue factory. Merci. Come on, find it already! What is the freaking holdup? What did the Cabal do? Send the stupidest vampire hunters in the history of all mankind? Find it already! No, no, moron! You already looked there! Um, uh, Monsignor? Uh, we already looked there. Twice. Oh, pipe down, you walking stillbirth! I know what I'm doing! I'm just... Just being thorough! Standard cabal procedure! Standard procedure? Standard procedure? Standard procedure? My arm! This is so frustrating! That's it! I'm just going to have to break the curse and just go in there and my- What? What manner of being dares to challenge Madame Strigoi? Hmm? if I do say so myself. High five! Hi what? You raise your hand like so, and slap it together. Why? <laughs> Madame Strigoi! We heard a scream! Huh? Oh, oh, there you are. No, no, I'm fine. I, I just like to scream randomly once in a while. Let's me know I'm still alive. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, pish posh. Anyway, we did it. We have all the things we need for this ship. I wanted to thank you for all your help and... No, no need. But I want to... No, I mean, no need for all that now. Dr. Riga Mortis, a brilliant doctor, an old friend, sent me a message saying he can cure you of your vampirism. But he must do it tonight, when all the stars are aligned. <laughs> stars all aligned? What does that have to do with Quite anything? You. Really? Where? How is it? Now. Go now before it is too late. He said come to his lab. In the windmill, just past the dam. Follow this road down to the gorge by the end of the lake. Trust me, <laughs> you can't miss it. <laughs> well, okay. If he's your friend. Yes, yes, long-time friends. Old poker buddies. Now go! No more talk! Quickly! Bye-bye! Au revoir! Goodbye! Au revoir! Yes, 
Yes, go off to my good friend, Dr. Rigor Mortis. <laughs> He'll know just what to do to you. <laughs> And then I, Shroudy Von Kiefer, will be your only hope for salvation. <laughs> You'll be glad to see me then. Yes, you will. You'll appreciate old Shroudy then, won't you? <laughs>